You're wearing a lab coat. You're standing with men of science, visionaries, brilliant but misunderstood. I see a land marked up, like a great experiment. Each test a new beginning, each sacrifice an acceptable loss. You will not be loved, but you will save humanity, however you choose to define it. In our last episode, we finally arrived at the Institute, only to discover that our son, Sean, was a 60-year-old man, a man called Father, who's the director of the Institute. This came as a huge blow, and it felt like the right time for Nate to make a decision. This is not the moment of no return for choosing a faction to side with in the game. There are many such moments to look forward to. But for now, we will choose to work with the Institute and explore the rest of the story of Fallout 4 by siding with them. When done, of course, we will come right back to this point and explore another faction story. After talking with Father and agreeing to work with him, he gave us our you first assignment. He wants us to meet with the heads of all of the departments in the Institute. Advanced Systems, Robotics, Synth Retention, and Bioscience. We also need to talk with the head of Facilities. This is going to take us all over the Institute, and we might as well use this opportunity to learn everything we can about the Institute. We'll read every terminal, listen to every holotape, talk to every person, and read every note we come across before moving on with our quests. We start, of course, here in Sean's room. There's the elevator we came up in behind us. Institute residences are organized into residential stacks. And so we'll start by heading out the door in this room and taking a staircase down to the bottom floor to start from the beginning of this stack. We see that we're on the second floor and we find a child walking up from the ground floor. This is Julia Thompson. Sometimes Quentin Almost is really done. mean to me, but to up this my mom says I have to be I nice anyway. I wish Quentin would stop telling those stupid stories. Hey, pal. I've heard stories and the surface sure sounds scary. My daddy says your father's daddy, but he looks so much older than you. Hi. Isn't it wonderful here? So there are kids in the Institute. It's not just a research center. There are families here. Perhaps this would complicate things for someone who wanted to destroy the Institute. Heading down to the ground floor, we stumble upon a conversation. Almost done. Just need to tighten up this primary drive servo. That's the third primary drive breakdown this month. As far as I'm concerned, the phase out on these older models can't come soon enough. Oh, I don't know. Most of them have lasted long past their projected lifespans. If you ask me, they were built pretty well. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Even so, I'm ready to see the full Gen 3 roll out. There we go. All set. Unit, you can return to duty. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks again. Of course. This is Allie Fillmore, head of facilities, and we need to talk with her. It's my responsibility to make sure this place runs smoothly. Excuse me, doctor. They weren't kidding. You really are here. Well, all right. I'm Allie, Allie Fillmore. You can think of me as the Institute's chief engineer. When father told us about you, I could hardly believe it. You've been through so much. I think most people would have just given up. If you don't mind my asking, what was it that kept you going all that time? What makes you ask? I'm a complete stranger to you. I suppose when I heard your story, I just... Well, I felt sorry for you. You've suffered more tragedy than any one person deserves. 
Your whole world is gone. I'm sorry. I know that was a very personal question. I guess I just wasn't ready to die yet. Well, that's understandable. The will to survive is the most basic human instinct. I wanted to kill the son of a bitch who murdered my wife. Kellogg always was a cold bastard. If you ask me, we're better off without him. I just wanted to find my son and keep him safe. Now that you've found him, I hope you're proud of the great man he grew up to be. Now, I'll give you a quick rundown of the facilities division, and then I'll answer any questions you might have afterward. As you might guess, we keep the Institute's mechanical and electrical systems running smoothly. We maintain and upgrade all of the systems that make it possible to live and work in a place like this. There's a lot of machinery behind these walls that recycles the air and water and provides power to the laboratories and quarters. The work we do might not be as exciting as some of the other departments, but it's at least as important. So, now that you're here and you've spoken to Father, does that mean you're on board? On board with what? The Institute, of course. Sean implied you operated on a level, if not equal, and at least similar to the rest of us. Curious. I'm just looking around. I see. Well, please do mind what you touch. Sensitive equipment here. Not like Topside. I'm not on board with anything. No? And yet here you are, poking around. One might find that... suspicious. If you're not planning on staying, I'd recommend keeping your hands to yourself. Wouldn't want to give the impression you're up to something. And consider having another talk with Sean. He really is anxious to have you with us. Absolutely. Oh, good to hear. It'll be a load off Sean's mind. Take your time. Get yourself acquainted. There's a lot to take in. Plenty of things you won't find topside. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the facilities division, I'm happy to discuss it. Who built this place originally? Has it been here long? The construction of the Institute is the work of generations of scientists. The original survivors of the war, our progenitors, took refuge in the basement of the old Commonwealth Institute of Technology. Over time, their sons and daughters dug deeper into the earth and built increasingly sophisticated habitats and laboratories. It's a process that's still going on today. Even now, we're digging out tunnels for new facilities and infrastructure. Just think what this place will look like a hundred years from now. I hope I'm there to see it. I'd like to know about the people in your division. Of course. Dr. Lawrence Higgs is our mechanical engineer. He oversees the major life support and security systems. Power distribution is Dr. Evan Watson's area of expertise, and Dr. Newton Oberly is in charge of food and housing. He coordinates with bioscience to ensure that our meals are balanced for optimal nutrition. We also make use of a number of synth units for low priority maintenance and labor. It must be a challenge to meet the power demands of a place like this. Absolutely. We scratch and scrape for every precious ounce of voltage that we can. Over the years, we've learned a few tricks that help supplement our power budget. When necessary, we can tap into select sources on the surface. We take only what we need, of course. Fortunately, Advanced Systems is always working on new solutions to generate more energy. It's a good thing, too, because the demand is always increasing. <laughs> you don't even want to know what a single use of the molecular dematerializer consumes. I'm good for now. Thanks. Goodbye, then. What a fascinating interaction. We learned that the people living and working here are descendants of the students and faculty of the Commonwealth Institute of Technology, who survived underground after the bombs dropped in 2077. And if Allie Fillmore is anything to go by, the people here are mostly normal. She recognized the tragedy that Nate lived through and gave us her sympathy. And yet she was a bit arrogant, depending on our choices. But we get the impression that the Institute might be using the technology they've used to create the sense to, at some point in the future, optimize existing humans. She just said that she hoped to be around a hundred years from now. The only way she could do that is if she used Institute technology to prolong her life. Before heading back upstairs to finish exploring Sean's room, we can turn around to talk with a synth vendor. Greetings. As the Institute's requisition vendor, I can provide supplies for your missions on the surface. How may I assist you today? What can I requisition? I have access to a modest selection of arms, armor, and other items approved for use in field missions. Let's see what you got. This Institute vendor has a number of legendary items that can't be found anywhere else. And interestingly, he uses caps to barter with. For weapons, he sells Experiment 18A, a legendary plasma rifle. 
It has a 25% faster fire rate and a 15% faster reload. Aside from that, it's like every other plasma rifle and accepts all other plasma rifle mods. Under apparel, he sells four pieces of legendary armor. The Mark II Synth Chest Piece, which has a legendary effect that causes enemies to have a harder time detecting us while we are sneaking and not moving. Then, the Mark II Synth Helmet, which grants us plus one to agility and perception, and the Mark III Synth Chest Piece, which grants increasing energy and damage resistance the lower our health is, up to plus 35. The Mark III Synth Chest Piece also has greater base damage and energy resistance compared to the Mark II Synth Chest Piece. Then there's the Mark III Synth Right Arm, which increases action point refresh speed. But everything here is a bit expensive. Maybe we'll come back and explore this later. Before heading back upstairs, we can move west to discover the Institute Concourse. There's the elevator that we rode down to the basement before climbing back up into Sean's quarters. It descends down a hole in the middle of the concourse, and the Institute scientists and synths meander across this glass floor suspended above a pool near to some waterfalls. It's really beautiful. The Institute is a circular construction, and we see ramps leading up to the doorways that lead to each Institute division. And beneath each residential tower stack is another resource to explore. Oh dear, we've got our work cut out for us. Heading back to the residential tower stack we came from, we see a door to the right before ascending the stairs that we can explore. Gotta find the terminal. The door is locked, however, but thankfully we find the terminal right next to it. Security's too tight. However, it's locked with a master lock, and I can't hack this. If I could, however, we simply find an option to open the door, and inside we find a storage room. Lots of stuff here that we can scrap down, but four med kits with stim packs inside, a couple of ammo canisters, and a bunch more scrap laid about. Backing out, we see that the left path leads to robotics. We could follow the red line to robotics. The right path leads to bioscience, and that's a green line. But we need to finish exploring this residential stack. So heading back upstairs, we can move back into Sean's room. There's the child synth. We can't talk to him right now. Moving through the door past Sean, we see a terminal here next to a microphone, but we can't activate it. We see that Sean has a balcony overlooking the concourse a great view of the entire institute. Turning around, we can explore behind the staircase. This leads to a storage area, nothing of interest here. So heading to the staircase, we can go back up to the second floor of Father's Quarters. This leads to a large living room slash bedroom. Moving east first, we find his bathroom. And it's small. He's got a tiny little shower here with a toilet and a sink. Not much privacy, but I suppose he does live alone. Back to the living room, we find another terminal next to some cabinets, but we can't access it. There's a med kit here with a stim pack inside, and in a box next to the staircase is a holotape. Director's recording number 108. Damn it, Galton, what the hell is going on down there? I have to convene an emergency directorate meeting because of this screw up. That synth was a prototype, it was absolutely not ready for field testing. The mess it caused in Diamond City threatens decades of work to keep us out of the spotlight. I will be very clear. My legacy as director will not be tarnished by your division's mistakes. I am going to find out exactly who approved any sort of operation above ground, and that person will be held fully accountable. This is in reference to the broken mask incident, one of the first things we learned about the Institute upon arriving at Diamond City. This is referring to the moment that a synth, after drinking some beer, went on a massacre in the Diamond City marketplace. Turns out, it was an accident. We heard the voice of a previous director, possibly the one that preceded Sean, possibly one a bit older. The synth that went on a massacre was an early model synth that wasn't ready for field testing. Somebody made a mistake and let him loose on the Commonwealth without permission. Looks like that person was held accountable, but we don't get any impression that the Institute tried to make amends to the people who suffered in Diamond City. We find Sean's bed, and it's, um, weird. Almost looks like a hospital bed. And behind this, we find a terminal that we can actually access, but it's locked with a novice lock. Thankfully, we can hack this, and if we do, we find four entries. 
Institute Central Network, Director Terminal 1A. Status normal. In the first one, Kellogg Conrad, Enhanced Life Expectancy. July 16th, 2285. Kellogg's occasional presence continues to unnerve the others. At first, I thought they were merely intimidated by his confidence and arrogance, or perhaps even afraid of his general being. Kellogg is, after all, a killer. But as I've continued to witness their reactions, gauge their sidelong glances, I've detected something else. Something I probably should have anticipated. Jealousy. Kellogg is a living memorial to a forgotten program. He is an augmented human being, a cyborg really, and the benefits he has received cannot be denied. But really, the scientists here could not care less about enhanced reflexes or greater combat efficiency. No, the cause of their envy is something more practical, more primal, his enhanced life expectancy. Just how long will Kellogg live if he passes naturally? However unlikely that may be, it's hard to say. He's already more than a hundred years old, older certainly than any other human in the Commonwealth. His complete physiology has been altered. Perhaps he'll make it to 150, maybe even 200. Let the petty have their petty jealousies. Kellogg is a living testament to the ingenuity and superiority of the Institute, and I take no small pleasure in knowing that must irritate him to no end. We get the impression that Allie was sort of referring to this in our last conversation. Just think what this place will look like a hundred years from now. I hope I'm there to see it. She wanted to live at least a hundred more years, kind of like Kellogg would have had we not killed him. Perhaps she's hoping that the Institute will again start augmenting humans. And perhaps she can be one of the first. And the next one, status reports. Bioscience hydroponics programs functional FEV lab offline. FEV lab. Wait a minute, where have we heard that before? I was bioscience, not engineering or advanced systems or anything. Before I was forced to leave, I was working on a serum to reverse this mutation. It's still in my lab and, well, look at me. I need it. So if you get in there, I need you to find it in my old office. That's right. Virgil needed us to find a serum to cure his condition, which was in his office, his lab in bioscience. Well, here we read that an FEV lab in bioscience is offline. Is this FEV lab the one that Virgil worked in? Could Virgil becoming a super mutant be why the lab is offline? But if it's offline, will we be able to access it? Robotics, synth output nominal, production materials fully stocked, advanced systems, child synth project under quarterly review, weapons diagnostics ongoing, phase three behind schedule. What exactly is phase three? It's in advanced systems. Perhaps we'll find out more there. SRB, the Synth Retention Bureau. Director Zimmer, still offline. Above ground operative terminated. Retention programs functional. Pattern recognition algorithms ineffective. The above ground operative must be Kellogg. And the lone wanderer likely met Director Zimmer during the events of Fallout 3. It's interesting that they use the word offline to describe Director Zimmer. Does that mean he's dead or just missing? Is this evidence that he was killed either by the Lone Wanderer or by Harkness? Or could he have never come back for some other reason? And his note that pattern recognition algorithms is ineffective tells us a lot about the way synths work. The SRB exists to retrieve synths that have escaped the Institute. Looks like they tried to use a pattern recognition algorithm to predict where they would go. But the synths that have escaped aren't acting like robots. They're not acting like computer programs. They're not following a predictable pattern, making that tactic ineffective. Facilities, power output maxed, air and water recycling systems functioning normally. And the next one, personal notes. The wait continues. Io can only confirm sightings outside of Vault 111, and again in Diamond City sometime later. What that means, I'm not sure. Will we actually meet? Was this all for nothing? No, not nothing. I will have learned valuable things about myself, my past, either way. I cannot afford to let emotion get in the way. I must simply observe and record. I'm told Kellogg has gone offline. 
Strangely, I find myself thinking of Dr. Walker. He had such high hopes for Kellogg, such faith in the implants and what they could mean. I still regret eliminating that project, but I know where it would have led us. Walker was never shy about his goals, and too many others were starting to listen. In the end, I believe I was justified. The Institute is about preserving humanity, not some bizarre amalgamation of biology and technology. He used the word offline to describe Kellogg. Kellogg has gone offline. We killed Kellogg, and that's the same word he used to describe Dr. Zimmer. Is that more evidence that Dr. Zimmer is actually dead? What's interesting here is when he said that he cannot afford to let emotion get in the way. This leads us to believe that he does have emotion, that it's there, and he's struggling to keep it out of the way. He has to exert energy to remain focused on the Institute, on the experiment, on the science. It tells us that Sean releasing us from Vault 111 was more than just an experiment. He really did have hope, hope that we would make it here, hope that Nate would survive. And the last one, Director Access, Synth Shutdown? Wow, Father can shut down all synths from this terminal? We can try it. Unauthorized Director Code Required. Oh, but we can't use it. Huh, I wonder if we can find a Director Code. In a nearby cabinet, we find Sean's terminal password. Oh, well, we hacked that terminal, so no need for this now. We can loot a med kit on top, and then explore a supply closet nearby, but we don't find much here. Out of this room, we can round a corner to open a door to the third floor of the residential stack. Well, we've explored below. Let's continue up. And on the top floor, we overhear a conversation. You call this a clean floor? Are your visual receptors malfunctioning? Can you not see the grime and dust? My apologies, sir. I was issued a defective cleansing unit. Don't make excuses. You're clearly defective, and I intend to report this. Perhaps after you've been disassembled, we can use your components to make something that's actually useful. Yes, sir. Yikes! Spend enough time here, and you'll be sick to death of the word synth. I certainly am. Hi, Doc. You know what happens when people get robots to do all their work? They get fat and lazy, that's what. Real people doing real thinking and real work. That's the future I want. If that's how you feel, why not leave? Because we could do so much more. But no, everyone is obsessed with these damn synths. It's wasted potential. That's what it is. People have no trouble getting fat and lazy on their own. A few, here and there, perhaps. But not on the scale I'm talking about. But I can see you're having a joke at my expense. You're hardly the first. I don't see any harm in robots helping out. Robots helping out? You make it sound so tame, so harmless. If that's all it were, I'd agree. What's being planned here is much more than that. I'm talking about synths replacing human beings. You've just arrived, so perhaps it isn't apparent to you yet. But in time, you'll see what I mean. No argument here. Nice to meet someone who isn't obsessed with replacing people with machines. I've been saying for years that we're too reliant on these synths. But nobody wants to listen. Maybe you can talk some sense into them. In any case, I suppose I should say, welcome. Perhaps a fresh perspective will do some good around here. Well, I didn't want to stick around to talk very long, but it's interesting to find an institute scientist in the institute who disagrees with the synth program, who doesn't like the idea of synths replacing humans. I wonder how his story will end up. At the top of this residential stack is the boardroom. Inside, we find a huge oval table surrounded by chairs. There are a number of containers, none of them filled with anything interesting. However, on one of them, we find director's recording number 52. Look, director, I'm going to make the same recommendation I did last time. We did everything we could. Four years dedicated to preserving this Commonwealth provisional government. You've seen the same reports I have. It's falling apart and fast. We need a plan for what happens when that fall is complete. I know some of the other divisions have suggested we just cut off all contact, hide underground and pretend nobody's home. That would, in my opinion, be a mistake. We can't just give up on these people. And with the Android program, we don't have to. We'll soon have the capabilities to deploy androids to the surface 
in great enough numbers to maintain order. Just... just think about it, alright? Keep it in mind moving forward. This is in reference to something that we learned from Nick Valentine had we pursued a relationship with him, running with him as a companion. He's the first one to really give us details about this Commonwealth Provisional Government. The massacre of the CPG was still pretty fresh in people's minds at that point. And folks were still losing sleep over the broken mask. Massacre of the CPG? What's that? The Commonwealth Provisional Government. Years back, a group of settlements tried to get together and form a coalition. Every settlement with even a hint of clout sent representatives to try and hash out an agreement. Only the Institute sent a representative of their own, a synth. The man killed every rep at the talks. The Commonwealth Provisional Government was over before it even got off the ground. He claims that the Institute got tired and just wiped the entire government out. Could this event be what Deacon was referring to when he said, Starting with ancient history, they tried to take over the Commonwealth, came a hair away from succeeding with their synth army, so there's that. Perhaps the Institute was getting so disheartened by the quote-unquote disorganization and petty squabbling of the CPG just because they weren't getting their way. The government wasn't going the way they wanted it to. They didn't have the control they had hoped for. And so as Valentine told us, they wiped everyone in the CPG out with, as Deacon told us, their synth army. We don't hear anything about that in this holotape, though they do talk about wanting to maintain order. Looks like after Father shelved the android program, they kind of went against this guy's advice. They retreated underground and hid here, stepping away from Commonwealth politics. Out of the boardroom, we can turn left to continue exploring the Institute counterclockwise. We see that these residential stacks are connected to each other with these large tube-like walkways. We pass by a courser. They're a bit less terrifying here in the Institute. We arrive at the top of the next stack. Here we find the door to Dr. Holdren's quarters. Inside, we find a layout similar to Sean's, but it's a lot smaller a meager bathroom. Interestingly, if we look in the garbage can beneath the sink in the bathroom, we find a hollow tape. join the railroad. Wake up, Commonwealth. Since they're not your enemy, they are victims in this war as well. This is the same hollow tape that we listened to inside Fallon's in Diamond City. How did this get inside the Institute? I suppose it must have been brought in by a courser. In this room, we find a door leading to a balcony, a terminal that we can't access, and a double bed, with another door leading to another balcony. On this balcony, however, we do find something special. Lying on a table is a perk magazine. Yes. You've collected the issue of Astoundingly Awesome Tales, number 12, Have Dog, Will Travel. Your canine companion permanently takes 10% less damage. This is the only perk magazine in all of the Institute. Since most of these rooms are identical, I'll stick to only covering the things we find inside of them that are worthy of note. Heading downstairs, we can explore Dr. Carlin's room, but his room is even smaller than that of Dr. Holdren's. We find one medkit inside, but then like with Carlin, if we look in the garbage can in the bathroom, we find another copy of Join the Railroad. But it's not the only one. We find another in his bedroom. Heading to his bedroom, if we look inside the garbage can next to his dresser and the med kit we looted, we find another. It's a duplicate of the exact same holotape. The scientists are clearly not a fan of the contents of this holotape to throw it in the trash. I wonder why so many scientists have copies of railroad propaganda. Backing out of Carlin's room, we can move next door to Dr. Ayo's quarters. He's got a med kit on a cabinet and a terminal. AO Quarters Private Terminal. Inside we find one option. To disable the computer's safeguards. Warning, security safeguards have been disabled. Your terminal's private data might be at risk. Huh, that's all we can do from this terminal. Perhaps this will be useful later. We don't find much else here. So heading back to the staircase and moving down, we find doors to quarters that have already been opened, so we have to close them to read the name. This one belongs to Dr. Volkert, but inside we find the terminal's locked. However, we find Brendan Volkert standing here. Well, you're gonna have to work pretty hard to impress anyone down here. Hey. Liam's been trying to teach me robotics. It's more complicated than I thought. 
He's part of the Biosciences Division. We can loot a couple of medkits here, and then, in the garbage can in his bathroom, we find another copy of Join the Railroad. That's the last one we find in the Institute. And strangely enough, they're all in garbage cans on different floors of only this residential stack. The same residential stack where Dr. Io lives, coincidentally. Back out, we can open the door to Dr. Oberly's room. But aside from med kits, there's nothing of interest here. Back out. It's an honor to have you here, sir. We can take the ramp down to the ground floor. And we see that by using the walkway above, we bypassed the bioscience department. We'll have to go back and explore that. But first, we overhear a conversation. Is it true Food Supplement 77 has been discontinued? That is correct. That was my favorite one. Can't we keep it a little longer? I will be happy to forward your request to the Bioscience Division. In the meantime, please feel free to enjoy one of our other nutritious and flavorful food supplements. I want Supplement 77. I am sorry, sir, but that supplement is no longer available. Useless machine. Mankind redefined. It's catchy, isn't it? Oh man, no more Food Supplement 77. What a heartbreak. This appears to be the Institute's cafeteria, and we can talk to this food vendor. Hello. Please ensure that your dietary requirements are being filled. What have you got? I can offer a range of nutritious and great-tasting food supplements. Food Supplement 7 is very popular for its spicy flavor, and Food Supplement 91 is our newest offering. I'll take a look, sure. This guy sells Institute bottled water and Institute food packets. The nice thing about these food sources is that they don't have any radiation, so we can consume them safely. But it looks like these aren't the only foods available. Going behind the counter, we find ice-cold Nuka-Cola and a bunch of pre-war beer. Looks like the Institute does have a taste for some things above ground. We can talk with some of the scientists here. So you were there the day the bombs fell. That must have been terrifying. We're all looking forward to working with you. I can't imagine living on the surface. It sounds like a nightmare. They uh, like to stand on chairs. Before heading to bioscience, we find another door behind the staircase here. This, uh, well, it, it leads deeper. Opening the door to the right, we find another storage closet with scrap and one ammo box. Opening the other door, we find the same thing. A med kit, a footlocker on the ground, and a couple of ammo boxes. But this is a dead end, so heading back out, we can turn left and move towards bioscience. We arrive on a platform directly before the bioscience division, and we can open up the door to Institute Bioscience. We arrive in a hallway. The lab is before us, but to the right, we see a door. It's not locked or anything, so we can open it to find a long curved hallway that takes us quite a ways until we open another door to arrive in a storage room. Here we find boxes and crates stacked up on shelves, but nothing of interest except for a door in the southeastern wall. This leads us to another hallway with a door directly before us. To the right are two ammo canisters on a crate, and the door directly in front of us is locked with a novice lock. After picking it, we find two med kits and a bunch of scrap inside. Heading out of the closet, we turn right to go down a hallway and open yet another door, which leads to yet another hallway. Gosh, bioscience is just a labyrinth. There's a door directly in front of us, which leads to the FEV lab. And this door is locked with a novice lock. The FEV lab is the place that Virgil told us we could find the cure to his condition. It's the place we read about on Father's Terminal that's now offline. And here we find it locked with a novice lock. We'll have to come back here and explore the FEV lab in a different video because it's so important that it deserves its own video. So instead of going in, we can turn around and continue northwest down the hallway. This leads to a sliding door that brings us to a garden. We find crops growing in little troughs. This must be where they grow the food that's placed in those nutrient bars and food supplements. Opening a door to the north, we arrive in a lab. We find a window overlooking the primary lab that actually has people in it. But before heading in there, we can explore this one. We find a number of lockers behind a bunch of tables. In the lockers, we can find a variety of goodies, including ammunition, chems, and even coarser uniforms. Here on one of the desks, we find a bioscience terminal. Bioscience Terminal 2D. We find four options in the first SZI Phase 2 Development. 
Synth Zoological Initiative Phase 2 Development Journal. Initial Thoughts. What to create? We've engineered creatures that inhabit the sky and the land. The creatures in the sky are the synth birds that I covered in a video many years ago. And aside from synth humans, which obviously inhabit the land, we'll bump into other synth creatures that inhabit the land in just a bit. The next logical step is a creature of the sea. The greatest challenge remains data collection, accurate measurements, behavioral data, life cycle, habitat, etc. Might Nahant have something useful? Note to self, request that we allocate a scavenger team to that area. The author may be referring to the Nahant Oceanological Society, which I did a video about here. It indeed has a lot of interesting pre-war lore and a lot of research and data about the sea, but we don't find any synth presence there, so it looks like the Institute hasn't moved forward with this recommendation yet. So which aquatic creature makes a good candidate? Start with size. Nothing too large. Wrong use of two there. Nothing too small. Most promising candidates, genus Delphinus, dolphins. Genus Carcharinus, requiem sharks. On-site habitat will be a logistical challenge. Expansion of bioscience likely necessary, including large water tank. Many logistical challenges to implement. Facilities division likely to oppose this. Have to pitch this as the first step in a broader plan. What else can go in the aquatic habitat? Can we grow food there? What other experiments could we do? Could we develop underwater synth models to carry out seabed salvage operations? Probably far-fetched. Need to work on this more. We'll table this journal for the time being, focus on other priorities, until I can come up with more reasons that will benefit from the aquatic habitat and still gather data in the meantime. In the next one, Warwick Homestead Initiative. Inside, we find three options in the first mission statement. The Warwick Homestead Initiative was conceived to facilitate field testing of various genetically modified specimens in the unique climate of the Commonwealth. It is hoped that we gain insight into the effects of trace radiation on the growth and development of said specimens. We of the Bioscience Division are in full agreement on the following hypothesis. Subjected to the proper levels of ambient radiation and soil pH, such as those found in the exceptionally fertile soil at Warwick Homestead, our modified seed specimens are likely to exhibit accelerated growth rate and a twofold increase in size. So the Institute is undertaking an experiment growing uber crops at the Warwick Homestead. In the next one, Project Implementation. Stage 1. Using genetic manipulation, we will develop a unique breed of cucurbitaceae with similar characteristics to those commonly farmed in the Commonwealth. Cucurbitaceae include pumpkin, squash, zucchini, watermelon, and cucumber. Stage 2. Acquire Roger Warwick, Patriarch of Warwick Homestead, and conduct a series of intensive interrogation sessions to learn all we can about his life and family. Stage 3. With the intelligence gathered in Stage 2, create a synth replica of Roger Warwick and embed the unit on site at Warwick Homestead to oversee the operation directly. The Synth Retention Bureau will handle logistics of this aspect of the initiative. Stage 4. Begin covert deliveries of prototype seed batches for planting. Stage 5. Collect observational data from embedded unit. Stage 6. When sufficient data has been collected, retrieve synth unit and specimens for lab study. Purge all surface evidence of the initiative. And here we have concrete black and white evidence that yes, the Institute does kidnap and replace people. It's for their experiments because of course it is. But the rumors are true. The deepest fears held by the people of Diamond City are justified. It's not just panic. It's not mass hysteria. It's reality. The Institute kidnaps people and replaces them with synths. In the last one, status reports. Batch P761 ready for shipment. Batch P664 delivery complete. Report WW877104 received. Batch 689 delivery complete. Batch 689 initiate delivery. Batch 689 ready for shipment. 
Report WW 877-0905 received. Batch P557 delivery complete. Report WW 877.1004 received. Batch P557 delivery complete. Batch P557 initiate delivery. Batch P557 ready for shipment. Report WW 877.0715 received. Batch P534 batch destroyed in transit. Batch P-534, initiate delivery. Batch P-534, ready for shipment. This is a log of all of the shipments of experimental seeds that the Institute has been sending to the synth plant at the Warwick Homestead. From this entry, we can see that the synth plant at the Warwick Homestead has received four deliveries of experimental seeds. And it looks like there is one bundle of experimental seeds that is currently ready for shipment. Backing all the way out of the Warwick Homestead Initiative, we can read Behavioral Anomaly Report. Director Holdren, here are the details you requested regarding the Gorilla Behavioral Anomalies. A total of 16 incidents of heightened aggression have been documented. Bioscience personnel who witnessed these events, myself included, would categorize the level of aggression displayed as extreme and dangerous. In all, six synth handlers have been destroyed by gorilla attacks. As for what triggers these behavioral changes, I speculate that it's a reaction to perceived conflict. Several attacks followed heated arguments that took place within earshot of the pen. Another occurred soon after the recent SRB security sweep. It seems clear there's a fault in the behavioral model. I doubt it can be corrected. I know you're against it, but I think we have to consider destroying them. Failing that, I recommend that all contact with the gorillas be limited to synth units only. Bioscience personnel should not be permitted to come into contact. The risk is simple, simply too great. Carlin. And here we learn about the experimental land synths we read about earlier. They're gorillas. And it sounds like they're keeping some in a pen here. And they're dangerous. Yikes. Backing out, we can view access logs. Access local login C. Holdren category update SZI. Synth Zoological Initiative Phase 2 Prep. So we learned that Holdren authored that. Sounds like he wants to go on vacation to the Nahant Wharf. Access Local Login B. Volkert. Category Update Feeding and Maintenance Log, which is interesting because we don't actually get to read that one here. Access Local Login C. Holdren. Category Update SZI Phase 2 Prep. Then Access Remote Login JIO. Notes Redacted. Huh. Access local. Login I. Carlin. Category added. Behavioral anomaly report. Access local. Login K319. Maintenance replaced cooling unit. Access local. Login C. Holdren. Message transmit slash primary director's terminal. Message subject. SCI phase two. He's trying to get father's eyes on his plans to go to the Nahant Wharf. All access to this log was local. That means it took place from one of the terminals in this lab, except for one from a JIO. And the notes of this access are redacted. Is someone spying on the people of bioscience? Why did this JIO need to access this terminal? That's it for this terminal, but we find another just to the left of the viewing window. It also is called the bioscience terminal, and inside we find three options. In the first, departmental notices, we find three options. In the first, our special guest has arrived. Now that our guest of honor is here, I want to remind everyone to be polite, accommodating, and welcoming. It's not often we receive visitors from the surface, and this occasion is more special than most. I know I can count on all of you to extend a hand of friendship and greet our visitor with the utmost hospitality. Let's embrace this exciting event and make the best first impression we possibly can. Director Holdren. He, of course, is talking about us here. Nate is that special guest. In the next one, power conservation. When we first implemented the power efficiency guidelines, I was proud at how well we were able to meet those standards with only a minimal impact on our productivity. It was a daunting challenge, but we rose to meet it. Lately, however, we've been getting lax in our habits. Too often, I'm finding lights and equipment left on when they shouldn't be, and the environmental settings have been changed without my authorization. Let's rededicate ourselves to doing what's right for the needs of the Institute as a whole. After all, this isn't just our home, it's a home for the future generations, who will carry on the great work of building a better future. Director Holdren 
So, it looks like the Institute has power problems right now. Seems it may have grown a bit too big for its britches. In the last one, Synth Zoology, the next step, I have some exciting news to share with all of you. Father has approved the next phase of my proposed Synth Zoology initiative, and I'm already in the process of setting up a schedule for the initial prototyping phase. As has always been the case, this is a low-priority project, but those of you who find yourselves with free time are welcome to contribute. I'll need to make a few preliminary decisions, not the least of which is what kind of creature we'll want to replicate. I don't have to tell you how eager I am to begin, and I can't wait to see what amazing things we can do, given our recent advances in synth development. Director Holdren. Ha! So C. Holdren got his wish! He came up with this whole aquatic synth idea, wrote a proposal, sent it to Father's Terminal to make sure Sean got his eyes on it, and Father approved. The Institute has eyes on land, in the air, and soon they will have eyes at sea. Backing all the way out of departmental notices, we can read soil pH values. And yeah, that's a lot of numbers. I'm not going to read them. There's nothing mind-blowing here anyway. And the next one, view access logs. Access local, login iCarlin, category update, soil pH values. And we see that again until we find access local, login B. Volkert, accessed departmental notices. Access local, login C. Holdren, category update, department notices. Access local, login iCarlin, accessed departmental notices. <laughs> well, it's a little petty. Carlin wrote it down as departmental notices, Holdren changed it to department notices, and then Volkert changed it back to departmental notices. And it looks like Carlin and Volkert won. We find it as departmental notices. Wonder why Holdren was having an issue with that. With all of these terminals read, we could open a sliding door to enter the primary lab, but there is one more door over here to the northwest. Opening it, we climb some stairs to find a section of the Institute that doesn't look like a section of the Institute. It looks like a pre-war office building. We find a first aid kit on a wall, a couple of pre-war cabinets and desks blocking a door. Huh. Could this be a part of the basement of the Commonwealth Institute of Technology as it was before the bombs dropped? The original survivors of the war, our progenitors, took refuge in the basement of the old Commonwealth Institute of Technology. And could it be from this room that the Institute began to delve deeper to build the actual Institute? Well, this is a dead end. So we could go through the door to the primary lab or retrace our steps all the way back to our point of entry to enter the lab through the front door. And in so doing, we overhear a conversation. Have you had time to examine my latest reports on Batch 274? Not yet. I've been reviewing Father's plans to expand our operations at Warwick. He's eager to get that going. So I've had to put everything else to one side. I wonder how the Warwick family is doing. Young Wally must be close to 10 years old by now. It's remarkable that any child can survive for so long up there, don't you think? I... I try not to think too much about it. We have more than enough to occupy ourselves here. And those people are the last remnants of a dying past. It's best not to dwell on the subject. They're still people, and they're suffering. We can at least admit that it's regrettable. After all... How can we hope to redefine mankind if we can't even hold on to our own humanity? Well, that's a question best left to our colleagues in the robotics division. Yes, well... <sighs> I suppose you're right. I mean, it sounded like a moral question to me. Since when is morality relegated to the robotics department? This was a conversation between Clayton Holdren and Isaac Carlin. Holdren is the director, hence his fancy green lab coat, but we'll talk with Carlin first. Most men lack the patience to observe and document plant growth. Hey, Doc. Yes, yes, I'm sure that whatever you have to say is very interesting, but now simply isn't a good time. Working on something important? <sighs> All of my work is important. Now, if you're quite finished, I'd very much like to get back to these mental equations. They're difficult enough without the distractions. Sorry to bother you then. Mm-hmm, goodbye. Someone's a little full of himself. Hardly. There is no place for ego in science. I'm simply trying to tell you in as polite a manner as possible that I am busy. Now, goodbye. If you're busy, that's one thing. But I don't care for your tone. My tone. 
There's no need to take offense. As you can clearly see, I'm deeply involved in some rather complicated mental equations. Now, how about I get back to those and you get back to whatever it is you're doing. Equations for what? Uh, honestly, you wouldn't understand them. Now, I'm afraid I must end this little chat, although it's been so very diverting. What a charmer. If that was an attempt at humor, I'm afraid it's lost on me. I'm much too preoccupied with my equations. And now, if we're quite finished here, I'll return to them. Those mental equations will get a lot tougher after I suck you in the jaw. Uh, what? Now, just a moment. There's no need to get angry. If an apology will suffice to stem your anger, then I'll offer it. It's so nice talking to you. Goodbye. Okie doke. I'll let you get back to work then. Good. Yikes! And this was the guy who was arguing for the humanity of the people topside? Goodness gracious. Hopefully Clayton here will be a little less brusque. Dr. Carlin's doing some amazing things with our genetically engineered crops. Doc. Welcome. So good to have you here. Dr. Clayton Holdren, head of the Bioscience Division. I can't wait for you to see the work we're doing. It's truly amazing. Like what? I was just about to explain that. I'll reserve judgment until I know more about it. In that case, let me give you a brief overview of what we do here. I'm sure it's fascinating, but that's not why I'm here. Of course, I completely understand. Before you go, at least let me give you a brief overview of what we do here. I promise I'll keep it short. I look forward to learning more about it. In that case, let me give you a brief overview of what we do here. As the name implies, the Bioscience Division specializes in fields of study such as botany, genetics, and medicine. Our most important directive is to ensure the health and well-being of everyone in the Institute. To that end, we cultivate highly specialized breeds of flora for use in food and medicine. We've even started to explore the idea of synthetic animal life. You probably saw the gorillas. They're really just a pet project at this point, but the potential is exciting nonetheless. The gorillas are synths too? They are indeed. Judging by your reaction, we've done a good job making them seem lifelike. The initiative is still in its early stages, but the prospects are very exciting. Yeah, I can't imagine anything more exciting than fake gorillas. Speaking only for myself, I find them fascinating. Of course, I might be a little biased. <laughs> Sounds like a waste of time to me. You should create something more useful. It's just my opinion, of course, but I don't believe that every discovery needs to be useful. Sometimes we innovate for no other reason than to learn what's possible. Seems like there's nothing you guys can't do. With hard work and ingenuity, any challenge can be overcome. I'm sure I've taken up enough of your time as it is. But I have to ask, have you decided whether you'll join us? I'm an outsider. Would there even be a place for me here? Even if science isn't your passion, there are plenty of ways to contribute. Our projects sometimes require an agent who can work on the surface to observe and gather information. From what I've heard, you are both fearless and resourceful. I think you'd be ideal for that kind of role. I doubt it. I just don't think I'd fit in. I'm not sure. Right now, I'm just trying to keep an open mind. It's a big decision, I know. But it's also a rare and important opportunity. No need to rush to judgment. I'm not sure how well I'll fit in, but I'd like to give it a try. Great. I was hoping you'd say that. In any case, I imagine you'll want to continue looking around. Or, if you prefer, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Is there anything I can do to help out? There might be. Tell you what, you get settled in and check back with me later. I'll see what I can find out. Tell me more about those synth gorillas. On the whole, I'd say they were a success. Their behavior does generally match what our historical data says it should be. Unfortunately, we had a few early setbacks. The creatures can become suddenly aggressive, and they're quite strong. They destroyed two of their synth handlers. So now we keep them in an isolated habitat where they can be safely observed. You mentioned medical care. I might need that from time to time. In that case, you'll want to introduce yourself to Dr. Dean Volkert. He's our top biologist and also serves as the Institute's resident physician. Dr. Volkert works in the infirmary. Just pay him a visit whenever you need to. You won't find better medical care anywhere else in the Commonwealth. I'll promise you that. I'm good for now. Thanks. Take care, then. Okay, so he's a bit nicer than Carlin, and it sounds like he might have a quest for us a little bit later. There's another guy in bioscience, this Dean Volkert, 
he isn't here, we'll have to track him down in the infirmary, and the other scientists here don't say anything special. Looking around, we find more plants everywhere, and then we find the gorilla pen. We find two synth gorillas on the other side of this glass. Dr. Holdren's synth gorilla project is showing promising results. They don't appear to be a very practical experiment. At least, I don't see the Institute releasing them above ground anytime soon. But I'm sure they learned a lot by creating them. That's it for bioscience, so we can leave the way we came in. But before we go, we can play through some of the idle conversations we can overhear while exploring the place from time to time. Three levels of approval. Do you believe that? Three! Did you add those new strains of Trichanthos we discovered to the database? I told you that I would. Well, unsurprisingly, I have. We'd be lost without you, Isaac. Thanking a man for doing his duty is like thanking a dog for barking. Dr. Carlin's doing some amazing things with our genetically engineered crops. Rosalind is as smart as she is beautiful. I just wish I could get her to notice me. Two directors down, three more to go. Heading out, we can turn right and cross the cafeteria residential stack. We explored this already and head towards advanced systems. Just outside advanced systems, we see two scientists having a private conversation. When are you going to tell me about this mysterious phase three? You know I can't talk about that. Hmm. So this phase three we read about in Father's Terminal is so secretive, even other members of the Institute don't know anything about it. Turning around, we can enter advanced systems. And upon entry, we overhear another conversation. She's been at it for over two hours. What is she even testing? Nothing. At this point, she's just doing it for fun. Huh. I wonder who they were talking about. Maybe it was the person inside the firing range over there? In case anyone didn't mention it, quiet time runs from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Oh. Thanks, Evan. I don't remember asking. Well, that was productive. Racing outside, we can try to talk to the two scientists who just left. Father has accomplished so much. I hope you can appreciate his work as we do. Hi. Child synth prototype may truly be the key to our future. Not everything you've heard about the Institute is true. Give us a chance. But they don't tell us much, so heading back inside, we can try to talk to this guy. Safety first. Remember that. Hey, Doc. Since you're new here, you should take time to learn our safety procedures. And the sooner the better. Rules create order, and order promotes efficiency. Oh, I'm gonna like him. How many rules are we talking about here? <laughs> Not nearly enough, if you ask me. You sound like my fifth grade math teacher. I hated that woman. I doubt her rules were a matter of life and death. Fail to follow protocols in one of our labs, you could end up with a serious injury. Or worse. Too many rules get in the way of efficiency. It slows things down. Well, I've heard that before. I've also seen scientists get too cavalier with protocols and end up dead. It only takes one mistake, one lapse. Remember that. Oddly enough, both Nate and Nora can allude to previous military experience, despite the fact that Nora never served in the military. Words any former soldier can appreciate. A woman who understands the need for discipline will be a valuable addition here. Words any former soldier can appreciate. A man who understands the need for discipline will be a valuable addition here. I had some handbooks made up, but that was years ago. I'll see about getting one to you. Uh, how big is this handbook? Just a few thousand pages, but I like to think it's a brisk read. I certainly find it so. Yeah, look, don't worry about it. I'll figure out the rules as I go. Look, it's not just for your sake. If you're careless, other people could get hurt. Sounds good. Sure, whatever. Take care, then. <laughs> I love that little pause before he just shuffles off. Oh, well, there are men who love poetry and men who love rules. Next, we can open this door to talk to uh, this lady. She had stopped her experiment long ago, and now she was just in there for fun. This is Rosalind. If you ask me, we're only scratching the surface with the latest synths. Hey, Doc. Hmm? Oh, hi there. Sorry if I seem distracted. I memorized five sets of design schematics and now I'm doing detailed mental comparisons. What kinds of blueprints? Mostly components for a new plasma pistol concept I've been toying with. High energy weapons are sort of a hobby of mine. Nobody can memorize a dozen blueprints. Come on, don't bullshit me. I didn't say it was easy. 
But I've been practicing at it since I was a little girl. That's amazing. Oh, well, a lot of us do that. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. I just wanted to say how much I admire Father, and that it's an honor to meet you. I really hope you'll stay here with us. Rosalind. One day, I'll design a more efficient reactor to replace that old clunker in the basement. Oh, well, a lot of us do that. Ugh. I mean, she sounds fun. I'll take her over the, uh, rules book guy. Heading into the firing range, we can see what's here. We find a bunch of synth relay grenades. And these are really cool. They work just like a regular grenade, except instead of doing damage, they summon an institute synth that is relayed into your location. It then fights by your side until it dies. We find a bunch sitting here, and then we overhear Rosalind. I need to synthesize a few components. Any idea if the latest weapons run has finished yet? Just finished up an hour ago. So, yes. Finally. There are fusion cells and an institute pistol on the counter here. We can try out one of these synth grenades. And there you go. Nothing to shoot here, but it summons a synth. Subject identified. There's another pistol with more ammunition and ammo crates on a table over here. Exploring the rest of this room, we find a back door that's barricaded with lasers. We remember from Father's Terminal that Phase 3 was part of the Advanced Systems Department. Could this door lead to whatever this Phase 3 is? Nearby is a sliding door and inside, a terminal. Accessing it, Advanced Systems Terminal 3B. We find three options. In the first, we can view access logs. Access local login E. Watson notes reviewing research proposals. Then we get the exact same thing in the next one. Then access remote login Madison Lee notes reviewing synth progress updates. Access local login E. Watson updating findings on child synth development. Access local login E. Watson submitting regulation updates to directorate. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Next, we can go to regulation updates. Submitted to Directorate for approval, review permissions for assigning sidearms to personnel, SRB recommendations to increase security have overridden any normal procedures for allowing Institute scientists to carry firearms. Training for said firearms also needs to be updated. Reconsider interdepartmental network access. Certain divisions appear to be abusing this. Huh. Maybe certain divisions that have remote access to view log entries in other divisions? Looking at you, Justin Ao. Security systems need to be reviewed by Facilities Division ASAP. Given recent events, it is extremely important that the Institute be prepared for any conceivable situation, no matter how unlikely. Dr. Ao has requested this for some time, and I am now inclined to agree with him. These recent events, which now necessitate a review of security systems, must be the Brotherhood entering the Commonwealth. Next, personal notes. I have, in the last 24 hours, observed no less than seven blatant violations of Institute protocol. The degree to which people appear to ignore the rules which have been put in place to keep us all safe is incredibly disappointing. Madison insists that I continue the testing battery with the child synth, despite my reservations about the project as a whole. If this were any other situation, I would not have second thoughts about going straight to the director. But given the circumstances, I shall simply wait it out. Well, this must be the personal terminal of Evan. He's a stickler for the rules, and the reason he's not going straight to the director about his concerns with the child synth is because the director's the one who came up with the idea for the child synth. A tricky position to be in. Exactly how much power does Father wield over the directorate? Backing out of Evan's terminal, we can move over to the pod to the southeast. Here we find another terminal. Advanced Systems Terminal, also labeled 2B. We can view these access logs. Access Local, login R. Ormond, notes submitting research projects for approval. Access Local, login R. Ormond, notes update diagnostic tools for child synth project. Access Remote, login Justin Io, notes redacted. Again! First in bioscience, now in advanced systems. Why does Justin Io have remote access and what is he doing in these terminals? Access local login E. Watson notes rejection of project proposals. Next up, research proposals. We find four options in the first human cybernetics. 
Proposal, build on existing institute research into implants slash cybernetics to augment human capabilities and lifespan. Previous program met with limited success in a single subject. Using a broader array of subjects and new techniques could prove highly effective. Approval, rejected by the director, notes none given. Here we find yet another attempt at institute scientists to restart the cybernetics project to increase their lifespans. And Sean is against it. And he won't even give him a reason why. And the next one, cold fusion. Proposal. Divert time slash materials from current phase three research to exploring the possibility of sustainable nuclear reactions through electrochemical processes at or near room temperatures. Pre-war work on the subject yielded no concrete results. Advances in technology could potentially make it possible. Approval rejected by Madison Lee. Notes, evidence suggests this is, and always will be, a pipe dream. Looks like cold fusion in the Fallout universe, as it is in our own universe, is a fringe science. Kind of like turning lead into gold. In the next one, miniaturization. Proposal, modification to relay assembly, allowing for extra parameters when rematerializing. Specifically, to explore recalibrating object size and density. Imagine if it were possible to use the relay to shrink someone down to the size of an insect, or even smaller. Approval rejected by E. Watson. Notes, let's keep things out of the realm of science fiction, please. <laughs> I mean, the relay itself was a matter of science fiction until they invented it. So, I mean, if it's plausible, why not explore it? In the last one, plasma weaponry. Pre-war plasma weapons exist, albeit in a somewhat primitive state. Samples have been collected. With work from a dedicated research team, said weapons could be improved upon dramatically. Approval pending. Madison Lee notes something to consider after phase three is complete. This is a really interesting proposal considering plasma weaponry is arguably more powerful than laser weaponry. Now, America developed plasma weaponry after obtaining it from aliens. We learned this during the Mothership Zeta DLC for Fallout 3. The US military made a prototype plasma pistol based on alien technology and then developed it further, giving us the plasma weapons we know today. With existing pre-war plasma weapons as powerful as they are, and with existing Institute laser weapons, the weakest energy weapon in the Commonwealth, it's interesting that they would describe them here as primitive. But I digress. Backing out of research proposals, we can read personal notes. Dr. Lee has been spending more and more time in her lab with the kid synth thing. It's creepy, and I can't help but wonder if she's getting a little too attached. Evan has rejected my last 12 proposals. I don't know how to get through to that man at all. This must be Rosalind's terminal then, which means opening this door, we should find Madison Lee. And after looting a med kit, sure enough, there she is, peering through a microscope. Now, Madison Lee, as you'll recall, is the person Arthur Maxson wanted us to talk to if we were working with the Brotherhood of Steel. But we are not. So for now, we'll only go through the conversations with her that we get if we're siding with the Institute. When we do our Brotherhood playthrough, we'll be talking a lot more with Madison Lee. Excuse me, Doctor? Ah, it's you. You're here then. Yes, yes, I know who you are. We all do. While I'm sure Father is very happy that you're here, I do hope it doesn't interrupt our work. What is it you're working on? Advanced systems, special projects. You've seen the boy, a uh, uh, synth, already. We've been hard at work on him for quite a while now. I get the impression you don't want me here. What I want in this case is largely irrelevant. Father gave his orders. Well, that's insulting. Um, I'm sorry. Not my intention. There's just quite a bit going on right now, and your arrival has the potential to throw things off schedule. Don't worry. I promise I won't get in your way. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Oh, before I forget, let me see that pit boy of yours. I've been told to install a coarser chip in it for you. Father's orders. You're to be given full access, with the ability to relay in and out of the Institute at will. W a coarser chip? What's it do? The same thing it does for our coursers. Creates a link to the relay that allows them and now you, to get in and out at will. That seems kind of unnecessary. I assure you, it's necessary. The relay is the only access to the surface that we possess. 
I don't want one of those things anywhere near me. If you expect to be coming and going, you're going to need one. You may have noticed that the relay is our only access to the surface. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure that'll come in handy. Given that the relay is the only way to access the Institute, handy is something of an understatement. In case the significance is lost on you, you'll be the only one here with that kind of access. If nothing else, it should demonstrate the amount of trust Father has placed in you. Now, unless there's something else, I really do need to get back to work. Is everything okay, Dr. Lee? You seem pretty tense. Yes, things are... It's fine. I'm sorry, I don't socialize much. I prefer to focus on my work. Tell me about the people in your division. I'm not sure what there is to say. Dr. Watson is the Specialist Project's lead scientist. He's, um, how to put it, uh, very organized and precise. Dr. Ormond is one of the youngest scientists in the Institute, and she's something of a prodigy when it comes to physics. I'd like a progress report on your division, if you don't mind. Taking your new appointment in stride, I see. Very well. We've shifted resources off of other projects, like the Child Synth, to focus on Phase 3. I'm hoping that the above-ground efforts are successful. I understand those depend heavily on you. I'm good for now. Thanks. All right. That last bit seems like an odd thing for her to say. Father hasn't really given us any orders yet, apart from meeting the division leads, but Madison Lee here is giving us the impression that we're going to be running a bunch of missions or ops above ground. Not sure if we were supposed to know that yet. And even though she says things are fine, they really aren't. But we won't learn more about exactly what's wrong with Madison Lee until we talk to her on behalf of the Brotherhood. Madison Lee, of course, is the same Madison Lee from Fallout 3, and she doesn't appear to be any happier here than she was in the Capital Wasteland. Poor Madison Lee is one of the more tragic characters in the Fallout universe. I explored more of her story in my video, The Epilogue, to Fallout 3. Now she does have a terminal here, but it's marked red, which means we'd get in trouble if she caught us reading it, but thankfully, we can wait for her to turn her back. Advanced Systems Terminal 1A. Three options in the first view access logs. Access Local Login Madison Lee Notes Review of Phase 3 Project Status. Access Local Login Madison Lee Notes Update Diagnostic Tools for Child Synth Project. Access Remote Login Director. Notes Redacted. So both Justin Io, the head of the Synth Retention Unit, and Father, the Director, Sean, have the ability to remotely access any terminal in the Institute at will. And they don't even have to leave any notes. What is going on here? Perhaps it's more innocuous with the Director's login here. After all, he had a direct hand in the creation of the child, Sean. Perhaps that's why he logged into this terminal to see how progress was going. Access local. Login Madison Lee. Notes. Review of all bioscience projects. Ha! Huh. Even though she's in advanced systems, she's reviewing bioscience projects. I wonder why she's interested. Perhaps we'll learn why when we talk to her on behalf of the Brotherhood. In the next one, Project Status, we see four entries. The first Phase 3, Status, Behind Schedule. Latest Developments, Housing Upgraded per Specifications of Madison Lee. Exhaust couplings replaced. Magnetic confinement field calculations refined. So phase three involves the construction of something. Something that required a housing, exhaust couplings, and a magnetic confinement field. What on earth could that be? Maybe some sort of uber weapon? Backing out, we can move on to synth prototype. Status in progress, latest developments, New skin added per director's specifications. Oh, perhaps that's why he logged into this terminal. Motor control issues addressed. Latest personality matrix from robotics division installed. Next, moving on to laser weapons. Status ongoing. Latest developments. Focusing mechanisms upgraded per Rosalind Ormond. Frequency modifications per Evan Watson. New housings fabricated. Then moving on to miscellaneous projects. Status not applicable, latest developments, Rosalind Ormond working on localized relay focus, all other prototypes slash theoretical models delayed due to phase three. Backing out of this tree, we can move down to personal notes. The official explanation for the accident in the FEV lab remains unsatisfactory. Facilities has nothing. They simply refer me to the director and he's keeping something from me. I've been around long enough to see it. 
I wonder if he ever considers the ramifications of what he's asked me to do. If he worries that having me build a synth that's supposed to approximate him as a child might give me some unintended insight into his character? Probably not. And to be honest, it probably won't. And here we get another clue that things are not right here from Madison Lee. Something happened in bioscience, which is why she was reviewing all of the bioscience projects. And here we know what it was. The accident in the FEV lab. The FEV lab, which was offline. The FEV lab, which was Virgil's workspace. The FEV lab that we need to explore. And we get the impression that she thinks that father is keeping something from her. Intentionally. What could he be hiding? Backing out, we find a hollow tape on the table. Advanced system notes. This is day eight of trial six. The last week has been very productive, but exhausting. I think we'll need a break after this. Benet has done some really marvelous work with the personality mesh. It's, well, it's, it's almost too good. The responses map almost identically to expectations, some of the most lifelike I've seen. Of course, it's not really Sean. None of his memories are in there. That, even now, would be a step too far. It's starting to have an effect on the team, I think. I know I've been caught up in the moment once or twice. Just a second or two, forgetting that he's not a real boy. Still, I think we'll need to consider restricting him to the lab only for the moment. I'm well aware that others are, are put off by his presence. <laughs> if I were slightly more arrogant, I might consider that a sign of success. Madison Lee seems to be one of the more level-headed scientists here. She's passionate about what she's doing here, but she's not blind to the Institute's faults. And the way she described father over and over again during our conversation, she talked about him as if he was giving down orders. It seems like being the director is really an authoritarian role here in the Institute. Does the directorate have any real power? Or can Sean overrule the directorate on a whim? Seems like that might be the case. We can linger a bit to overhear any conversations between the scientists. You all know that Dr. Thompson from facilities has expressed concerns about our power consumption. Here we go again. We're not violating any protocols. We're well within approved operating parameters. I checked. I'm aware of that. Nevertheless, we're going to have to cut back. I'll have a complete rationing plan ready soon, but in the meantime, I need you to make cuts anywhere you can. This is going to set us back by days, maybe more. I know it won't be easy, but we'll have to make do. That's all for now. Heading out, three down, two to go. Turning right, we can move to the next residential stack, and we pass by Nathan Fillmore. Father has accomplished so much. I hope you can appreciate his work as we do. And here we find the infirmary and overhear a conversation. No visible reaction to the K-14 compound. We'll start the next trial then. The dosage will be much larger this time, and the side effects will likely be more pronounced. Will there be any pain? I honestly don't know. I suppose it's your job to find out. Now hold still. There. All done. You can return to your duties. And remember to record every symptom you experience in detail. I hope I'll prove a useful test subject for you, Doctor. Mm-hmm. Here we find Dean Volkert of Bioscience. Let's see if he can patch us up. Take good care of yourself, and you won't have to see too much of me. Ahem. <clears throat> Once you've settled in, I'll want to do a physical and get a file going on you. No hurry, doctor, though. To... You're the doctor here? Everyone's a doctor here. But if you mean physician, then yes, I'm about as close as we've got to one. A step at a time, Doc. I'm only just getting my bearings here. I meant it when I said there was no rush. After what I've been through, a checkup is probably a good idea. I should think so. Who knows what you might have been exposed to up there. No offense, pal, but I'm not letting a complete stranger poke and prod me. I don't expect you to trust me right away. What I can tell you is this. The medical treatments of your time are nothing compared to what we can do here. How about you take some time to get comfortable, learn the lay of the land and such. In the meantime, you come see me if you need to get patched up. We'll do that checkup when you're good and ready. Take care of yourself, so I don't have to. Well, looks like he's not ready to take a look at us yet. Well, I guess we'll, uh, come back later. After looting all of the medicine on display, we can talk with a synth that walks by. Father has done remarkable things. 
I would not exist were it not for him. And then try to access Dean Volkert's terminal here. Let's uh, push him out of the way for now. Infirmary terminal 1A, three options. We can start by viewing the access logs. Access local login, Dean Volkert. Notes updating incident reports. Then we get a duplicate of that same one. But then access remote login, Justin Io again. Notes redacted. Access local login, Dean Volkert. Notes review of hydroponics output. But not even he is immune to Justin Io's snooping. Next, we can view incident reports. We've got quite a bunch. In the first one, incident 2845, patient E. Thompson presenting symptoms, first degree burns, left hand. Notes, patient placed his hand inside power relay without first disengaging, first aid applied. In the next one, incident 2677, patient Q. Fillmore presenting symptom, abdominal distress. Notes, patient ingested lubricant from robotics division on a dare, a medic dispensed. <laughs> Q. Fillmore is Allie's son. Just a kid doing kid things, I guess. And the next one, incident 2433, patient Liam Bonet, presenting symptom, wrist sprain, right hand. Notes, patient declined to say how injury occurred, only indicated it was related to using a terminal. Splint applied, yikes. Liam Bonet here sounds like he's a man who loves uh, literature. Can't wait to meet him. In the next one, incident 2128, patient M. Loken presenting symptom, dislocated shoulder, right side. Notes, apparent malfunction of synth. Handshake gesture applied with extreme force. Shoulder reset and pain medication dispensed. Ah, poor old Max Loken. Injured while in the line of duty, shaking hands with a synth. In the next one, incident 2858, patient redacted. Presenting symptom, severe blunt trauma to upper torso. Notes, injuries received in FEV lab. Redacted, director override AZ-77. Blunt trauma to upper torso. What on earth happened in the FEV lab? And in the last one, 2049, patient director. Presenting symptom, dizziness, shortness of breath. Notes, test results revealed... Redacted? Director override AZ-77. Sean came to the doctor with dizziness and shortness of breath. He was sick. But what did these tests reveal? I wonder if we can talk with him about it. Backing out, we can go to personal notes. Latest batch of food from hydroponics shows increased vitamin D content. Should help with the deficiencies I've been seeing lately. Of course, don't get access to sunlight underground, hence not enough vitamin D. Backing out of the terminal, we can turn around to explore this residential stack, but before we do, we see another door beneath the stairs. But this one is locked, and it requires a terminal. Nearby, we see the terminal, and it's locked with a novice lock. We can hack this sucker, and if we do, we find only the option to open the door. Once it's open, we find another supply closet. Inside, a med kit, some ammo canisters, and a bunch of scrap. Now we can climb the stairs. On floor one, we find the Orman residence, but all the terminals are locked, and aside from a few containers, we don't find much. Then we can go into Max Logan's room. It's a similar story here, though we do find a duffel bag, oddly enough, with a pipe revolver inside. Huh. And that's it for this floor, so heading upstairs, we find two more rooms in the first Fillmore residence. This is the home of Allie and Nathan Fillmore with their son, Quentin. Inside, we find all the terminals locked, some addictol on a shelf over the couple's bed. What are exactly what either Nathan or Allie are addicted to? And then in Quentin's room, we find another ice-cold Nuka-Cola. This one's a Nuka-Cola cherry. How many ice-cold Nuka-Colas does the Institute have? Then at last, we find young Quentin sleeping on his bed. Well, He's hello. the kid that ingested robotic lubricant and many of the other kids talk about him. It must be weird living in a vault. Sometimes I hide my dad's work notes just to mess with him. It drives him crazy. Yeah, he does sound a bit mischievous. Out of the Fillmores, we can go next door to the Benet residence. The bathroom is empty, but heading into the bedroom, we find a woman sitting on a chair. This is Eve. Yeah? Uh, <clears throat> As the Institute's first personal synth, I try to set a good example. What's a personal synth? Dr. Binet is carrying out a social experiment. 
He wants to see if a synth can integrate into a human family. I know I can never replace his wife or be a real mother to Liam, but I can at least help with the domestic duties. I like to think I'm a pretty good cook. I think that's admirable. Thank you. I'm glad to hear you say so. It won't change anything. You are what you are. A machine made to serve people. I... I know that's factually true, but sometimes I hope I can be more than that. Aha! Uh -huh. A personal synth? We find an option to flirt with this personal synth. If all personal synths are as good looking as you, I should get one for myself. I'm certainly flattered. Thank you. But if we pass the charisma check... Why, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. I don't know that I can be of much help with that, but the compliment has certainly made my day. It was a real pleasure to meet you. I'm sure you're still taking everything in, so I'll let you get back to that. Right. So Alan Benet, head of robotics, the guy who makes synths, made himself one. Heading to the bedroom, we only find two single beds. One for Liam, his son from his past relationship, and one for himself, so he doesn't share a bed with his personal synth. But then, of course, he wouldn't, because synths don't sleep. At least, not the synths in the Institute. Of course, I don't know what's creepier, sleeping with a synth or sleeping in a room with a synth that can't sleep and sits there all night, quietly. On a table in the living room is the Benet Quarters Terminal. Here we find two options in the first, Fancy Lad's Snack Cakes. It just doesn't make sense. I've run the diagnostics, quadruple checked the neural mappings, done comparative analyses of taste buds, tracked digestive patterns. Hell, I've even gone so far as to simply ask several of them. And still, I'm no closer to answering the question, why do Gen 3 synths like to eat Fancy Lad's Snack Cakes? I mean, sure, they have the capacity to experience taste. Every Gen 3 possesses the synthetic equivalent of the requisite receptor cells. But why this? And why all of them? Good thing it's physically impossible for a Gen 3 to actually gain weight and succumb to obesity. Wouldn't that be quite the Achilles heel? Humanity's most impressive technological achievement laid low by junk food. What the heck? All Gen 3 synths are addicted to Fancy Lad's snack cakes? Well, they are all descended from Sean, and therefore us. Is Sean a big fan of Fancy Lad's snack cakes? And synths can't gain weight. Fascinating. Looks like their bodies are locked in where the Institute builds them. I wonder if that also means that they can't build more muscle or lose any existing muscle. In the next one, view access logs. Access log local, login Alan Bonet. Leisure program, expert chess. Access local, login Alan Bonet, operation, music player, Toi Nocturne. Not sure I'm pronouncing that right. That's French for three nocturnes. It's an orchestral composition by Claude Debussy. I can't play it for copyright reasons, but you'd recognize it if you heard it. It's the one that goes. Da -da 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 -da. Access local login Alan Bonet, leisure program expert chess. Access local login Liam Bonet, historical text, the history of the Commonwealth. Huh. We've been led to believe that the people of the Institute don't really care about other people topside, let alone the actual history of the Commonwealth. Interesting to find young Liam studying up yeah. on pre-war history. With this floor done, we can move to the top floor. And here we find Dr. Lee's residence. And it's a sprawling one, larger than most of the residences of even some of the other directors. Heading inside, we find a lot of beer bottles on the table. Goodness, Dr. Lee. Her terminal is locked, but there is a holotape by it. Advanced Systems Notes. I think he's actually lost his mind. I can't believe he really expects me to do this. I've always been on board with the Gen 3 program. It makes sense, but this? Nothing good can come from this. How am I supposed to explain to my staff that Sean wants a child synth for no immediately apparent valid line of research? And to base the physical features off records of his own childhood? It defies all logic. No, I can't do this. I won't. But ultimately, she did. Because it sounds like the director always has his way. 
In her bedroom, we find a sliding door to a balcony. That's it from Madison's room, and that's it for this residential stack. Instead of using the tube walkway, we can head back downstairs and then move right so that we don't miss synth retention. Heading that way, we overhear a conversation. You know the protocol, sir. Authorized personnel only. So Dr. Ayo thinks he can hide in his office, does he? Well, you can tell him that I intend to speak to Father about these unannounced security sweeps of yours. Ransacking my quarters in the middle of the night is totally unacceptable. I'll pass along your message, Doctor. See that you do. Oh, God. The SRB is ransacking the quarters of other scientists in the middle of the night? Why? Before he walks away, we can talk with Newton Oberly. Doctor. Welcome. Welcome. It is so good to meet you. I truly hope you'll come to think of the Institute as your home. What do you do here? Oh, I'm in charge of housing and provisions. It's my mission to ensure that everyone lives a comfortable and productive life. I think it's a little too science fiction for my taste. Of course, I understand. Nearly all of us were born here, but you come from a very different world. The only place I want to call home was destroyed a long time ago. I'm truly sorry. This must all be terribly difficult for you. It'll take some time, but I could learn to like it here. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear you say so, and promise I'll work hard to make sure that you do. You should know that many of us consider it a great honor to have you here. Well, he seems nice. Good to see a few good eggs here at the Institute. Turning around, we can head into synth retention. I'm seriously thinking of heading over to robotics to knock some heads together. What now? They're dragging their feet on the targeting package upgrades I asked for. Maybe I should take some courses with me. You know, send a message. Hmm. Please don't. There's enough friction as it is between us and pretty much all the other departments. You going soft on me, Alana? My methods get results, and they will this time as well. You'll see. And there's Justin Io. We just overheard him talking about getting what he wants from other departments by intimidating them with coursers. This is the same guy who's been logging into the terminals of other departments and leaving redacted notes. The same guy who used coursers to raid another scientist's room in the middle of the night? What is he looking for? We find a lot of great gear in this room, a bunch of synth grenades. Even more that'll come in really handy. There are weapons here, fusion cells, ammo canisters, and a bunch of lockers filled with ammunition, weapons, courser uniforms, and even institute lab coats. Black for the SRB. Before we talk to Justin, we can read this SRB terminal. Synth Retention Bureau Terminal 2B. In the first one, Reclamation Target Tracking. Unit ID C241, status Unit at Large, investigation underway. Assigned Courser X236, location last sighting, good neighbor. Notes, no recent sightings, unit believed to be in railroad custody. Mem wipe likely performed by now. Unit ID S943, status Unit at Large, investigation suspended, see notes. Assigned Courser none, location last sighting, Boston Airport. Hmm. A synth at the Boston Airport? Where the Brotherhood is? Huh. Notes investigation suspended. Area deemed too hazardous at this time. Unit ID B-592. Status unit located. Reclamation scheduled. Assigned courser X-688. Location Libertalia Raider Stronghold. Notes, Unit B-592 has been mem-wiped by railroad agents. New identity is Gabriel. Unit now leads Raider Gang based at Libertalia. Shows highly aggressive tendencies. Has killed several dozen rivals and civilians. Suspect brain damage resulting from mem-wipe process. Unit ID K-823. Status destroyed. Assigned courser X-351. Location remains located northeast of Saugus Ironworks. Notes, units remains discovered near Saugus Ironworks and returned to Robotics Division. Unit destroyed by multiple gunshot wounds. Suspect raiders based out of Saugus Ironworks. Unit ID Leet, oh, L337. Status, unit at large, investigation underway. Assigned courser X973. Location last sighting, Corvega. Notes, unit has been mem-wiped. New identity is Leo. Exercise extreme caution. Unit has been trained by railroad and is proficient with several weapons. Unit has evaded capture twice and wounded coursers on both occasions. Next, we can read list of informers. The following individuals have proven useful in our reclamation operations. 
In exchange for caps, these persons have, in the past, provided information on escaped synth sightings and suspected railroad activity. If you make a new contact, add the individual to the database. Director Io. Informant list. Cricket. Occupation Caravanner. Location Mobile. Tommy Lonegan. Occupation Owner slash Proprietor of the Combat Zone. Location Combat Zone. Trash Can Carla. No. Occupation Caravanner. Location Mobile. Doc Weathers. Occupation Caravanner. Location Mobile. AJ. Occupation Chem Dealer. Location Good Neighbor. Murawski, Occupation Chem Supplier, Location Good Neighbor. Lucas Miller, Occupation Caravanner, Location Mobile. Henry Cook, Occupation Barkeep, Location Diamond City. They've got informants in every city, and all of the wandering caravanners that travel between all of our settlements, if we have any, are Institute Informants. Great! Backing out, we can view access logs. Access local, login Alana Secord. Operation update courser maintenance records. Access local, login Justin Io. Operation entered supply requisition form, small arms ammunition. Access local, login X688. Operation update case file 66764-B. Reclamation successful, file closed. Access local, login Justin Io. Operation review and update target tracking database. Access local login Justin IO operation review and approve revised courser training procedures. No one snooping on their terminal, not even father. Must be nice to be top dog in the institute. Has X-576 checked in yet? Not that I'm aware of. Hmm. Better keep an eye on that. Moving out, we can head southwest. We find a balcony overlooking an area below. Before heading down to check it out, we pass by Justin IO, who takes a seat. If the robotics division was a little more careful, we wouldn't have synths trying to escape. Hi, Doc. So, here you are. Justin Ayo, acting director of the Synth Retention Bureau. I'll be up front with you. We're going to be keeping a close eye on you for the near future. Despite your relation to father, you're a bit of an unknown quantity. I'm sure you understand. There won't be any issues, will there? I guess we'll find out. Indeed. Stay out of my way. Or you'll regret it. That sounds a bit like a threat. I'm sure I'm just misunderstanding you, though. Threats aren't advisable for someone in your position. Why? Don't you trust me? Oh, it's nothing personal. I don't trust anyone. But if we pass the charisma check... I'll be honest. You're an outsider. The first outsider to be allowed access to the Institute in quite a long time, in fact. There's little precedent for this situation, so... It's only natural to take extra precautions, hmm? It's nothing personal, I assure you. No problems here. Good to hear. Now, Father has asked that I provide you with a brief overview of the Synth Retention Bureau. Our primary responsibility is the recovery of escaped synths that are hiding among the human population on the surface. Why would synths want to escape? If the synths want to be free, you should let them. Synths do not want. They might look like human beings, but they're machines. As to why they're escaping? That matter is currently under investigation. So basically, you're the secret police. Secret police? If that's a pre-war reference, then I'm afraid it's lost on me. I'm sure it's best for everyone if the synths remain here. Certainly. We can't allow sophisticated institute technology to fall into the wrong hands. The results could be disastrous. Our main instrument is the Courser, a third-generation synth assigned to operate on the surface. Coursers hunt down and reclaim synths that have escaped the institute. They are highly self-sufficient, trained in combat, infiltration, and tracking. In a word, our coursers are relentless. Well, I gather you know all this, since you've encountered one already. In fact, I'd very much like to know how you defeated it. Interestingly, we don't find an option to mention the recall code that we got from Mama Murphy, if we happen to use it. Why does it matter? If there is some defect in courser combat programming, then it must be identified and corrected. I guess I just got lucky. That's hardly helpful. I hate to break it to you, but your courser wasn't all that tough. Hmm. Then it's likely the unit was defective. It's rare, but faults can occur from time to time. Oddly enough, both the female and male soul survivor can say they defeated the courser due to their previous military combat experience, despite the fact that Nora was a lawyer and it never served in the military. I'm no stranger to combat. I'm no stranger to combat. Even so, 
A courser should be more than a match for any single combatant. I suppose I'll have to ask robotics to perform detailed diagnostics on the entire production run. As if we don't have enough problems. Now, unless you need something else, I'll get back to work. If you're the acting head of the SRB, who are you filling in for? Dr. Zimmer holds that position. He's supervising the retrieval of some of the more high-profile units. In his absence, I keep things running smoothly. You mentioned that coursers undergo special training. Tell me more about it. The SRB constantly monitors our Gen 3 synth population, looking for specific traits. Those who show tenacity, fearlessness, and independence undergo a rigorous training regimen. We teach them armed and unarmed combat, investigative techniques, psychology, and mechanical skills. Those who pass a final evaluation become coursers. The rest have their memories wiped and return to their former duties. I'd like to know more about the synth reclamation process. Fine. Once a courser has located a rogue synth, it uses that synth's recall code to wipe its memories and render it inert. We then begin the delicate process of restoring the neural pathways to their original configuration. In those cases where the procedure is successful, the synth returns to duty with no memory of its time on the surface. All too often, we're unable to repair the damage and are forced to dispose of the unit entirely. I'm good for now. Thanks. Very well. Wait, so using the recall code has a high chance of causing permanent damage to a synth and they have to dispose of the unit? But Father just used the recall code on the boy Sean synth. Seems a bit reckless. Justin Io here didn't seem to be all that forthcoming about the whereabouts of Dr. Zimmer. He said that Zimmer was overseeing the retrieval of their more high-profile units, but I wonder how long he's been on that mission. Could it be 10 years, maybe? Next to him is Alana Secord. The Directorate should take the synth escapes more seriously. Excuse me. I swear I spend half my time smoothing the feathers that Justin ruffles. We need to be able to collaborate with the other divisions, and that's a lot harder when they're always angry at us. What's Justin doing that's causing friction? Oh, he's just pushy and demanding. He thinks his problems should be everyone's biggest concern. I have to admit, though, the other divisions have never taken our needs as seriously as they should. I guess they see us as a necessary evil or something. It's really not fair. A little friction between departments is normal. You'll work through it. Yeah, I guess that's true. Oh, just listen to me. It's the first chance we've had to get acquainted, and all I want to do is complain. In any case, it was good to meet you. You know, sometimes feathers need to be ruffled to get things done. Uh, I won't deny that. I guess I just feel like he comes on a little strong sometimes, you know? Well, of course you don't. Not yet, anyway. I'll stop rambling and let you get back to whatever you're doing. Yeah, well, if you can't get along, it's going to be hard to accomplish anything. Yeah, even worse, we got a lot of smart guys with fragile egos. Anyway, we'll figure it out. It was good to meet you. Looks like Alana Secord here is a great person to have in the SRB to temper some of Justin Io's more confrontational tendencies. But now we know why he's been accessing all of the terminals throughout the Institute. He's trying to figure out how synths are escaping. And he's looking into every other department to find his answers, even going so far as to raid their rooms in the middle of the night. Yikes. Moving into the southeastern room, we find a med kit on the wall. There's a map of the entire Commonwealth on a table in the middle of the room. And then on TV monitors above the table and on the wall behind, we find that the Institute is surveilling the entire Commonwealth. Each of these screens depicts a different point in the Commonwealth. And many of these cameras are perched up high and they move from time to time. Remember in bioscience when we learned that they had already created synths for the air? This is what those bird synths do. They're flying cameras, flying spies for the Institute. And we find pictures here all over at Fort Hagen, in Good Neighbor, in Diamond City, even outside Vault 111. I covered this topic and found the location of each and every one of these places in my video on The Watchers, linked in the description. After looting all the boxes in this room, we can head down the stairs to this room. We see tubes next to consoles, but they're all empty. My guess is that when they use a recall code on a synth, the deactivated synth is kept in storage here. But then we see a weird chair thing over here against the wall. 
It doesn't particularly look very comfortable. There are needles sticking out of it and a brace for the head. Perhaps they use this to rewire the synths that have been mem wiped by the railroad. As we head out, we find one final terminal on the wall. SRB Terminal 3B, in the first departmental notices, we find five options in the first Our New Visitor. As you know, Father has granted full access to our new visitor from the surface. That includes the entirety of the SRB. While we must accommodate Father's wishes in this matter, we must also remain diligent. Refrain from discussing any sensitive information, especially the ongoing investigation involving the Gen 3 synths. In an ideal world, the railroad will have had no influence on our guest. We do not live in an ideal world. Director Io. In the next one, Missing Synth Investigation. Due to recent developments in our ongoing investigation into the missing synths, I'm adjusting our policy regarding discussion of this subject with personnel outside of SRB. In brief, details of the investigation are now classified and cannot be shared with anyone other than SRB personnel, and even then, such conversations can take place only here in the SRB facilities. Those who are found to be in violation of this policy will face the strictest discipline. Director Io. But what does Justin Io have to fear from other scientists here at the Institute? Does he think that synths are escaping because they're getting help from someone in the Institute? And the next one, Infiltrator Unit McDonough. I'm starting to wonder if M762, the Infiltrator Unit McDonough, hasn't begun to outlive its usefulness. Assuming the identity of Diamond City's mayor has proved with invaluable intelligence over the years, but suspicions have only continued to mount. This latest incident, the publication of that newspaper article specifically calling McDonough's humanity into question, might just be the tipping point. I've spoken with Io, and we both agree if the situation does become untenable, reclamation seems unfeasible. M762 was specifically engineered to mimic the actual human McDonough. As such, the unit's synthetic biology is that of someone overweight and grossly out of shape. A mem wipe would kill any psychological weaknesses attributed to self-perceived old age, but that body? Lost cause. The real irony here is that M762, in one of its dispatches back to the Institute, requested a future posting in the Coursers, citing loyalty and years of surface. I suppose that's supposed to mean years of service? And that request alone was evidence of enough self-awareness and independence to completely eliminate him from contention. Never mind the fact that he wouldn't even fit into the uniform. Determination. When and if M762's identity is eventually compromised, the unit is effectively decommissioned in field. No reclamation. No institute assistance. Given its relative age and physical condition, not to mention the danger inherent in an infiltrator unit's discovery, further lifespan estimated at two weeks maximum. Alana Secord. So it's true! Mayor McDonough is a synth! Piper was right! Everything the Commonwealth has feared about the Institute so far has been correct. And this explains that person Piper said she saw meeting with the mayor. Trying to find out why the mayor happens to be meeting with the same suspicious looking courier every other week. Not from any settlement I've ever heard of. And not from a caravan. Always in and out before anyone has a chance to talk to him. He must have been meeting with an agent from the Institute. But this is more evidence of Institute kidnapping. They made the Mayor McDonough unit to look like the real Mayor McDonough, which means the real McDonough, who was Hancock's brother, no less, was kidnapped, taken, presumably killed, and replaced with this synth. In the next one, access to SRB, it has come to my attention that certain colleagues who are dissatisfied with our policies and procedures have, on more than one occasion, tried to circumvent our established process for registering their complaints with Father, and have tried to gain access to our secure facilities in order to complain in more direct manner. I'm sure I need not remind you that the SRB is off-limits to all personnel not assigned to this division. Do not allow yourself to be browbeaten, cajoled, intimidated, or otherwise manipulated into allowing anyone who lacks the appropriate clearance to enter the SRB. Failure to uphold this mandate will result in severe discipline. Director Io. Yikes. 
Things are not hunky-dory here in humanity's supposed best hope for the future. And in the last one, power conservation. As you're all aware, Father has asked that we monitor our power usage carefully and try to be as efficient as possible. As a point of personal emphasis, we should strive to be efficient in everything we do. But our division has needs that are unique among the various branches of the Institute. The fact is, sometimes our operations require resources that we cannot readily disclose due to the sensitive nature of what we do. I place my trust in your judgment. If you require additional power or any other resources to carry out your work, then take what you need. Consult me if you have any concerns or questions, but know that the responsibility of meeting your project deadlines falls upon your shoulders, and I won't accept limited power availability as an excuse for failing to meet those deadlines. In short, do what you need to do, and if anyone objects to the way in which we carry out our work, I will deal with those objections myself. Director Io. Man, he really is running the SRB like the secret police. Rules for everyone else, but not for them. Backing out, we can move down to inventory management. User X32B action deposit items 361 count bottle caps. User Justin Io action requisition items 100 count fusion cells. User X688 action withdraw items 1 count rifle armament. User X688 action withdraw items 20 count fusion cells. User X102 action withdraw items 1 count standard coarser armored coat. User Alana Secord action deposit items 30 count pulse grenade armament. User X182 action withdraw items 1000 count bottle caps. This is a great record of everything coursers need to function above ground. Lastly, we can view access logs, and this is very similar to the last one. Nothing out of ordinary. Alana Secord accessed inventory management. Justin Io initiated reclamation procedure on unit D865. X688 access departmental notices. Justin Io opened reclamation stasis chamber 3. That must have been those glass chambers we saw below. Alana Secord accessed departmental notices. And that's it for the SRB terminal. As we leave, we can overhear any other interesting conversations. Just got an update on the repairs to X191. It's gonna take a few more weeks. Like any machine, a synth can malfunction. Just wish it didn't happen so often. Out the door, we can turn right and follow the line down to the last residential stack. This platform before the staircase leading up is just a seating area, but behind this staircase, we find another door. This door leads to another storage unit, a really large one. We find a few ammo canisters. There is a door in the eastern wall leading to a darkened hallway and a terminal by a bunch of stacked chairs. This is maintenance terminal six. It's unlocked and we can view access logs. Access local login E. Thompson operation replaced primary display assembly, tube burned out. Access local login B767, Operation Cleaning Supply Inventory. Access local login A. Fillmore, Operation Routine Facilities Inspection. Access local login G921, Operation Requisition Additional Supply of Cleaning Agent 7. All right, everything seems to be normal here. Turning around, we can go through that doorway into the darkened hallway to find an elevator. Stepping inside and taking the elevator down, we arrive in a storage room covered in oil. We see oil slicks all over the floor here. And moving to the other side of the storage room, we see a door leading out to a cave. And there's earth moving equipment there. Moving to the other side, we find another door leading to this same cave. And then we remember that Ali Fillmore told us that they were constantly expanding the Institute. Even now, we're digging out tunnels for new facilities and infrastructure. This must be one of the places where they're expanding. There are crates and tools, a little bit of scrap, but really nothing we can interact with out here. Heading back inside storage, if we examine each of these shelves, we find a holotape Implant update, session number seven. Just keep talking if you can. I'm afraid this may be rather painful. Don't worry about it, Doc. Anesthetic would lower your blood pressure too much and I need you to remain conscious. You already explained all that. It's gonna be worth it, right? Oh, most definitely. These implants are 
much more advanced than anything you've had before. Dr. Walter is very pleased with you. The Gen 3 synth program is finally making progress. Thanks to the... genetic material you recovered. You talking about that kid we got from the vault? Yes. A perfectly unspoiled DNA sample. Now this next part is especially delicate, so if you could please look straight into the light. Should everything be purple? Hmm? Oh, that's just a calibration error. How about now? Better. I'm just glad to have a chance to test these on a cooperative human subject. Normally, the directors are very touchy about allowing this kind of technology outside the Institute. They must find you extremely trustworthy. You see, these are going to work, right, Doc? Oh, yes. When I say test, I simply mean collecting data over time, which will be very valuable to making further improvements. This next part may be exceptionally painful. Try your best to remain conscious. This must have been recorded shortly after Kellogg arrived at Vault 111 to murder Nora and kidnap Sean. The Institute was still fully invested in the cybernetics program at this time. They hadn't had a chance to use the DNA sample they got from Sean to develop synths yet. And from what we've learned in the Institute so far, it looks like they continued to develop the cybernetic program up until Father became the director, and then he's the one who shelved it. Could it be because he was still pissed off that the cybernetics program was used to enhance the life of the man who murdered his mother? We get another interesting tidbit from this conversation. The scientist said that he was glad to be testing this on a cooperative human subject. This infers that he's used to testing these cybernetic implants on uncooperative human subjects. A human subject would only be uncooperative if he or she were unwilling to be implanted with cybernetics, unwilling to be a test subject. It's unlikely that the Institute was testing these cybernetic implants on other scientists or members of the Institute, which leaves only one conclusion, that even before the Gen 3 synth program, the Institute was making regular trips topside to kidnap people to experiment on them. The scientist said that the Institute must find Kellogg very trustworthy because they're hesitant to let this kind of technology outside of the Institute, which means that if they did kidnap people and implant them with cybernetics to test them and see what would happen, that after the test, they likely killed those people, destroyed them to prevent their cybernetics from leaving the Institute. But that's it for this small room, so back to the elevator. We can take it up, walk through the storage room, and back out to the Institute. Now we can climb the stairs to explore this final residential stack. On the second floor, we find the door to the Secord residence. We don't find much but smokes. And it's interesting how many vices these scientists have. We find packets of cigarettes and bottles of whiskey in almost every single residence. The door next door is the Thompson residence. And aside from a bunch of toys in the children's bedrooms, there's nothing of note or significance here. Heading on out, we can move on up to the third floor. But instead of a residential bedroom, we find a hallway. In the middle of the hallway, we find two residences. Watson to the right and an unmarked door to the left. Entering Watson's room, we find it significantly smaller than all the other rooms, but there's nothing noteworthy here. And then crossing the hall, we can't access this room across from Evan Watson's. Turning north, we find a huge platform connecting to the elevator. There are benches here, and perhaps this platform gives us the best view of the Institute concourse than anywhere else in the Institute. But we don't find anything else of interest here, so back out to the spiral staircase, we can take it up to the last floor. We see that Quentin Fillmore has woken up from his nap. All right, we woke him up. Sorry, kid. Hi there. I guess you're from one of the vaults, huh? There are two more rooms on this level. The first one is the Higgs residence. Lots of cigarettes and beer bottles. Lots of cigarettes, just everywhere. But that's it. And the next one is... Unmarked. And this one is really clean. No cigarettes or garbage lying around. We do find a couple of beer bottles, so someone must live here, I'm assuming. But it's an unmarked door. We have no idea 
who lives here. But that's it for the final residential stack. We now need to head back downstairs and move east to explore robotics. Remember to keep unnecessary power consumption to a minimum. Don't recharge unless your primary levels are below 2%. Also, if you haven't patched your navigation software, do so after this meeting. The last thing we need is more synths bumping into walls. All right, that's all for now. You can resume your duties. If you encounter a hazardous chemical spill, Please alert the Facilities Division immediately. All maintenance requests should be directed to the Facilities Division. Okay, these guys are some chatty robots. We can race down to talk to Enrico. I fix one relay and two more start to fail. At least I'm not bored. Excuse me, Doctor. It's a real juggling act, trying to keep all the systems down here operating in the green. This place might look shiny and new, but there's a lot of old technology in these walls. I lose sleep worrying about when the next blackout's gonna hit. How old are we talking about? Well, the reactor and a lot of the related systems, you know, cooling, monitoring, power distribution, that's all pre-war tech. Most of the superstructure down here was built later, when the people who survived the war. I guess each generation's been tinkering with the place, adding labs, making upgrades, and so on. So basically, this place is a sham. Great. Ah, uh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, even the older tech has held up for decades. Some, even for centuries. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. Our ancestors built things to last. Of course, that was before they blew up everything in the war. Look, I don't want to get trapped down here because the power goes out. What? You think I do? If it's any comfort to you, I take my job very seriously for exactly that reason. Looks like everything's running great. I'd say you're doing your job. Hey, thanks. It's nice to be appreciated. Most people just take my work for granted. It's the kind of work that only gets noticed when something goes wrong, if you know what I mean. Heather, there's some stuff I need to check on. See you around, yeah? Well, Enrico was really eager to go check on some stuff. Interesting that even though he was born and raised here, descended from the scientists who built this place, he doesn't want to get stuck down here. From everything we've learned about the people of the Institute so far, they have disdain for everyone and everything above ground. But Enrico doesn't want to get trapped in the Institute. And I for one think it's enlightening to learn that all the pipes and machines behind the scenes were built pre-war. Most of what is keeping the Institute intact is pre-war tech that was built to last. I mean, we can't assume that the Institute hasn't created anything. They, of course, invented the relay and synths. Perhaps they haven't worked on the Institute's infrastructure very much until now, because all of that pre-war infrastructure was really solid, and it only recently became a problem. We find a few more people wandering around down here. Do we really need all these coursers roaming the halls? Hi. Isn't it wonderful here? Hi there. I've heard stories, and the surface sure sounds scary. But no one we can have a conversation with, so heading back up towards robotics, we can enter the door. Upon entry, we begin to overhear a conversation. Now, now, Alan, it could have been anything. It was probably just a glitch in the nervous system. The fine motor control software could use an update. If it were just a limb twitching, perhaps. But her eyes were moving as well. Involuntary twitching and rapid eye movements while sleeping can only mean one thing, Max. You just don't want to admit to yourself what it is. If you're about to launch into one of your impassioned speeches about artificial sentience and machines with souls, don't bother. I've heard enough of them by now. Hell, I could write them down from memory. But we can't just ignore the question. If a synth can dream, why can't it have a soul? And if a synth has a soul, then it is a living person by every standard we can measure. Of course it is far more comfortable to think of them as machines, so we can do what we want with them. If you disapprove of the work we do here, Dr. Benet, you know where to find the teleporter. Now just a moment. I never said that. I'm simply trying to open everyone's eyes to new possibilities. Well, it's an unwanted distraction. We're men of science, not philosophers. You do well to remember that. The synths are treating you well, I hope. Oh, wow. 
so even one of the Institute division leads is open to the possibility that synths have souls and might be people. But it sounds like he may be the only one. At last, here in robotics, we see the synth production cycle on full display. It starts in the middle of this room. A crane picks up a round piece of scaffolding and places it over here at the skeletal station. Once the skeleton is complete, the crane picks it up and moves it over to this station, the tissue station. Here the organs, the blood vessels, the muscles are woven into place. Once fully inspected, the crane moves it over to the neuroelectrical station. Here the body is jolted with electricity to jumpstart the heart. And finally the crane picks it up and then dips it into this vat of fluid. This is epidermal suffusion. Somehow this process encourages skin to grow over the muscles. And finally, the synth wakes up in this vat. Welcome to the Institute. The Please step right this way. Legacy. Hello. I'm new here and walks over to this door to disappear. Next, we can talk with Alan Benet here. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've increased synth responsiveness by 0.04%. Doc. Ah, it's you. You're finally with us. I'd just like to apologize for any trouble our synths may have caused for you on your way here. They, of course, couldn't be told of your identity. And they have very specific protocols for protecting themselves and institute interests, most of which I designed myself. But not to make problems for you, though, I, uh... Will you be staying with us then? What's it to you? Oh, forgive me, I, I realize... Well, I understand that's somewhat personal. It would just mean a great deal to Sean. I'm thinking it over. Well, I hope you do decide to stay. It would mean a great deal to Sean. Uh, not a chance. No? I... Hmm... Well, I'm sure Sean is quite disappointed. I do hope you reconsider. Yes, of course. Ah, good. Sean is most pleased, I'm sure. He's been quite anxious to have you with us. If you require anything, especially as it pertains to Sins, please let me know. This is a very awkward place to have a conversation in. The machines are so noisy and the scientists just can't stop talking amongst each other. But hopefully we were able to hear Alan Bonet there. Interestingly, from this conversation, we learned why synths have been attacking us before we got to the Institute. They couldn't be told of our connection to the Institute. Next, we can talk with Max Loken. Doctor, you've arrived at a momentous time. Our third generation synths are a true breakthrough. A culmination of centuries of research. It's no exaggeration to say that they're superior in almost every way to human beings. What makes them superior? The list of improvements is exhaustive. I can talk for an hour and still not cover all of it. Imagine what you could accomplish if you could live without fear of hunger or disease. Imagine what you could create if you could spend every waking moment of your life as you saw fit, with no need of sleep. I can understand taking pride in your work, but I think you're getting carried away. No robot is superior to me. You might not think so now, but just wait. You've only seen a fraction of what our sense can do. Their potential is limitless. What I've seen so far is pretty impressive. It's just the beginning. 
Like I said, a momentous time. And there's Max Loken, a true Blue Institute believer. Next, we can examine some of the terminals here. Next to this microscope is a robotics terminal. Robotics Terminal 1B. We find two entries in the first departmental notices. In the first impending arrival, our monitoring of events on the surface has confirmed that the time is almost at hand. Very soon, our guest will be here. I admit that I feel both hope and trepidation when I think of how our first meeting will go. Please make whatever preparations that you deem necessary. Consider all sensitive information to be classified for the time being. We cannot know for certain what our visitors' motivations will be, especially after coming into contact with the railroad. We will exercise caution, but we must also extend a warm welcome. In time, once a measure of trust has been earned, we can be more forthcoming. I need not remind you all how important this is to me personally, but I want you also to think of the opportunity for the entire Institute. We stand to gain a great deal if we make the most of that opportunity. Father. Well, understandably, not even Father trusts us completely yet. Looks like the Institute is holding things back for now. Perhaps we can uncover them. In the next one, Power Conservation Update. I recently met with Dr. Lee to review the latest power distribution metrics, and there is both good news and bad to share. I'll begin with the good. It's clear that we have all taken to heart Dr. Lee's request for a greater emphasis on power conservation. The metrics demonstrate that we have improved our efficiency across the board. I'm particularly proud to note that the robotics division has shown the most improvement in this regard, surpassing even advanced systems. Well done. Unfortunately, the efforts we have made to date are simply not enough. We must continue to find ways to conserve without adversely impacting our research and production. I know that what I'm asking is difficult, but I'm also completely confident that we will rise to the challenge. I have some ideas that will be discussed in the director's meeting. Until then, I ask that you please keep the need for conservation foremost in your thoughts, Father. So while robotics makes sacrifices to reduce power consumption, even surpassing that of advanced systems, the SRB is just consuming power willy-nilly. Their needs apparently are more important than everyone else's. And the next one, concerns regarding the child synth prototype. I'm concerned at the pace of our progress in correcting the problems with the child synth prototype. I cannot impress upon this division enough the need to resolve these issues quickly and completely. Time and again, we've corrected flaws only to see them return. I find myself questioning whether we're thoroughly testing these fixes before moving on to the next item. You know that I have great faith in all of you, but time is quickly running out. I must ask that you take whatever measures are necessary to meet the project targets within the time frame. Please make this your foremost priority. Father. Why did Father make this a priority? So far, the only use of the child synth was essentially a great elaborate performance for us. To make us think that we had found our child Sean, only to be devastated to realize the truth. Why did Father want to do this to us? Why did he have to perfect a child version of himself? This pet project of his surely was not more important than solving their power issues or fixing their dated infrastructure, which I think the other heads of the Institute realize, and which may help explain why they're kind of frustrated with Father over this child synth project. In the next one, missing synth investigation. It has been brought to my attention that some of you are displeased with the methods and practices deployed by the SRB division in its ongoing investigation into the missing third generation synths. I'd like to take a moment to address this matter. Firstly, know that I am aware of your concerns and that I intend to have a conversation with Director Io in order to ensure that he is also aware. Any disruption of your work must be taken seriously, especially at this critical time. However, I must also ask for a measure of patience and cooperation from all of you. It is simply impossible to gather the information necessary to carry out this investigation without an element of distraction and inconvenience. Remember that your cooperation is vital to bringing this investigation to a swift and successful conclusion. I'm sure that's something we all want. Father. Everyone's pissed off at the SRB due to Justin Io and his methods. Even Father's aware of it, but he's backing Justin Io. 
He wants the matter resolved and quickly, even if it disrupts the work of everyone else. And in the last one, Synth vs. Android. As production of our Gen 3 synths continues apace, I would like to take this opportunity to formalize our categorization. The term Android has been used interchangeably with synth for as long as the Institute existed. And though some of our older residents may actually prefer Android, Dr. Zimmer being a prime example, the term synth has always been more widely used. Today, our third generation creations are truly synthetic beings. So the designation synth seems more appropriate than ever. From here on in, I strongly prefer all official institute records and correspondences use the term synth or synths. Let us remember our past and appreciate the legacy of the android, but let us live for the future and recognize the power of the synth. Father. I believe this was written to explain why Dr. Zimmer kept using the word android during the events of Fallout 3. When we met him in Rivet City and learned that he was hunting a missing synth, he kept on calling it an android. You see, in the Commonwealth, we've made artificial persons, synthetic humanoids. You'll be searching for an android. Do you know what an android is? No, I imagine you don't. This terminal explains why they're all called synths in the Institute, even though Zimmer used the phrase android during the events of Fallout 3. Backing out, we can view access logs. Access local login Alan Benet notes reviewed work crew assignments remove flight risk candidates. Access local login Alan Benet notes access department notices. Access local login Alan Benet notes updated sixth generation optic suite design schematic. Access Local, login Max Loken, notes access department notices. Access Local, login Alan Bonet, notes submit second draft plan for alpha phase testing on VM functionality 3.0. Access Remote, login Justin Io, notes redacted. And there he is again, getting his fingers into everyone's terminals. Backing out, we find another terminal on the opposite side, two, in fact, flanking each other. In the first, also labeled Robotics Terminal, Robotics Terminal 2C, we find four options. In the first, Production Schedule, Group ID, blah, 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 Group Classification, G3, Gen 3, Specialized Labor, Role Specification, Excavation and Construction, Project ID, blah, 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 Unit Scheduled, 3. So the Robotics Department scheduled the production of three Gen 3 synths designated for labor. In the next one, we learned that they scheduled the production of two standard Gen 3 units to be used in operations and maintenance. In the next, we learned that they scheduled to produce four security Gen 2 units for use in salvage operations above ground. So they're still producing Gen 2 units even after creating the Gen 3 synth. Perhaps they're cheaper and easier to produce, which is why they're doing more dangerous tasks. And in the next one, we learned that they scheduled to create one standard unit for use in operations and maintenance. Backing out, we can read planned system upgrades. Here we find two options on the first current projects. Project ident blah blah blah. Status approved in progress. See implementation status below for details. Description implementation of new synthetic optic nerve tissue. Goals, a 10 to 12% increase in visual acuity. Upgrade implementation status, units scheduled 19, units upgraded 12. Wow. I mean, they have hundreds of Gen 3 synths by now, right? But they're only implementing this upgrade to 19 of them. Maybe the others were already made with the upgrade installed. Notes, next scheduled units, C461, J795. Other units scheduled and ready to fill in for the duration of the upgrade. Alan Bonet. I wonder exactly how they upgrade the eyes of a Gen 3 synth without dismantling it and starting over. Maybe this upgrade was meant for Gen 2 synths. But it continues. Upgrade completed on units T722, P874, D550, Max Loken. Next, scheduled units T722, P874, D558. Other units scheduled and ready to fill in for the duration of the upgrade, Alan Bonet. Upgrade completed on units V528, S322, R446, Max Loken. Next scheduled units V528, S322, R446. Are the units scheduled and ready to fill in for the duration of the upgrade? Alan Bonet. 
All right, so that was just a list of them progressively going through upgrades in batches. And the next one, upcoming projects, project ident blah, 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 status approved, awaiting implementation, description, motor reflex response time improvements, goals, 7% increase in motor reflex reaction time, project ident blah, 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 status approved, awaiting implementation, description, targeting software package upgrade, goals, 5 to 8% increase in ranged weapon accuracy. Project ident blah 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 blah, status awaiting approval. Description, complete transfusion to replace type 7701 synthetic blood with type 9010. Goals, more rapid clotting. Improved infection resistance. Infection resistance? This gives us the impression that Gen 3 synths are susceptible to the same infections as humans. But if they can improve synthetic blood to make them more resistant to these infections, I wonder if they can do the same for human blood. Backing out, we can move down to view access logs. And we see a similar scenario here. Access local, login Alan Bonet. Notes access production schedule. Access local, login Alan Bonet. Notes routine diagnostic on Courser designate X688. All functions nominal. Access local, login Alan Bonet. Notes updated production schedule. Access remote, login Justin Io, notes redacted. Access local, login Alan Bonet, notes more programming work on new AI software update. Access local, login Max Loken, notes access planned systems upgrade. Access local, login Alan Bonet, notes prototype testing of neural net upgrades. And finally, we can read project updates. And here we find three options in the first SRB investigation. As you are all aware, from time to time, one of our Gen 3 synths assigned to surface duty will malfunction and go off assignment. While only a rare occurrence in the past, in recent months, we have seen the number of losses rise noticeably. Director Io has opened an investigation into this matter, and I must ask that you all give him your full cooperation as he looks into this troubling issue. Please answer his questions as completely as you can, and provide Dr. Io with any logs, materials, or other items he requests. With your help, I'm sure we can resolve this matter quickly. Thank you, Father. So this was written and sent out to the directors at the start of the problem, just as Io was about to start his investigation. In the next one, Gen 1 phase out. Per Father's plans, as discussed at the recent directorate meeting, we will soon begin to phase out our Gen 1 synth units within the Institute, with the intention of relegating all remaining units to surface duties only. Our first generation synths have served admirably and extended their design specifications in virtually every category. But the remarkable breakthroughs in synth design and production that have led to our latest, more aesthetically pleasing models herald a time for change. Over the next several years, we expect to replace all Gen 1 units with Gen 3 units, and in time, we will enact a similar plan with the Gen 2 units as well. As we look forward to the future, let us also honor the memories of those whose hard work and innovation made the synths possible, and let us never forget the singular vision that challenged our forebears and that drives us today. Mankind Redefined. Dr. Alan Bonet. So they are producing Gen 2 units still, but they're planning to phase them out as they have begun to phase out the Gen 1 units. Interesting that even the Institute finds the Gen 1 synths to be a bit creepy. In the next one, Unique Project, overriding directive to not alter our synths' basic functioning notwithstanding, Father has granted clearance for a rather unique project. In select Gen 3 units, the synthetic brain is indeed capable of accepting specific enhancements to the visual cortex, basal ganglia, and right parietal cortex. The result is substantially improved combat effectiveness due to two factors. One, an increased understanding of weapon accuracy to the extent that the combatant can actually visualize the percentage of effectively hitting targets or smaller areas on those targets. Two, an altered sense of perception that mimics the effect of slowing or even stopping time. Recommend we commence surgery and field trials on appropriate operatives in the near future. This is interesting. Some have suggested that this entry is evidence that the sole survivor, Nate himself, is a synth. And this theory comes from the part number one where they talk about seeing percentages of effectively hitting targets. That, of course, is something we, the players, see when using VATS. 
The same is true with number two, an altered sense of perception that mimics the effect of slowing or even stopping time. Again, something that happens when we use vats. But I don't think that this is evidence that the sole survivor is a synth because the VATS technology that we use was created by vault Tech. VATS is an acronym for vault Tech Assisted Targeting System, V-A-T-S, VATS. It's a pre-war technology that's built into our Pip-Boy. And it's something that anyone with a Pip-Boy who has enough experience with that Pip-Boy can do. For example, the Lone Wanderer, during the events of Fallout 3, could also use VATS. The same is true for the Courier during Fallout New Vegas. If this terminal entry is evidence that the sole survivor is a synth, then it's evidence that the Lone Wanderer is a synth, and that the Courier is a synth, which wouldn't make any sense at all. Dr. Zimmer was in the Capital Wasteland looking for one synth in particular whom he actually found at Rivet City. He wasn't looking for the Lone Wanderer who couldn't be a synth as he was raised in a vault and only just escaped that vault at the age of 19. And it's highly unlikely that the Courier, a package delivery guy on the west coast of the United States, could also be an escaped synth. The one defining and uniting feature among these three characters is that they all have Pip-Boys. And VATS, as described in Fallout lore, is a vault tech technology built into the Pip-Boy. So from this terminal, I don't think we get evidence that the sole survivor is a synth. Instead, I think we get evidence that the Institute managed to replicate vault tech's VATS technology for use in their synths. Which might explain why coursers are such accomplished and thereby feared warriors. That's it for this robotics terminal, but there's another one right next to it. Robotics Terminal 3A. In the first maintenance requests, submitted by N. Oberly, found unit J284 cleaning boardroom for the third day in a row. I don't think this unit has ever actually left the boardroom. Navigation software patched, unit returned to service. Submitted by Justin Io, unit X472 complaining of blurred vision in right eye. Unable to correct without permanent damage, unit wiped and reassigned to facilities division. Oh, that poor courser. He must be devastated. Submitted by Ali Fillmore. Primary drive breakdown on B347. Third unit this month. Can we please look into this? Technician dispatched. Submitted by E. Thompson. Looks like latest navigation software update has some issues. Found two Gen 1s trying to walk through walls. Pathfinding software updated. All Gen 1 units will require patch. Facilities notified. I mean, it's not Gen 1 units alone that try to walk through walls. Everyone in this universe is either walking through walls or standing on tables or standing on roofs, but <laughs> let's just ignore that for now. Submitted by Liam Bonet. Hey, Dad. Eva's having trouble speaking today. Lots of stuttering. Can you please look into it? Identified rare looping issue in speech subroutines. Corrected and patched. In the next one, surface work crew tracking. Group ident blah blah blah, assigned units P177, J832, F593, N548, K670, location site epsilon, elapsed time 162143, last report 0216. Notes alert, raider attack, one unit abducted, SRB notified, awaiting update, Max Loken. Group ident blah blah blah, assigned units K290, R601, J828. Location site Gamma. Elapsed time 370901. Last report 22042. Notes. Report is now overdue. Continue to monitor. I'd give it another two days. Alan Bonet. Group ident blah 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 assigned units C065. Location site Alpha. Elapsed time 621955. Last report 11340. Notes. Units H744, B621, K084 recalled. Error. No data present. Hmm. Group ident blah blah blah. Assigned units G643, M911, L792, W440, O287. Location site Delta. Elapsed time 124-23-15. Last report 03710. Notes, not getting as much as we're hoping for here. Might need to shut down site Delta. Let's see what the next report brings. Max Logan. Group ident, blah blah blah, assigned units R781, T354, B888, J174. 
location site alpha. Elapsed time 160 3312. Last report 15640. Notes unit B888 removed, unit T354 added. Error no data present. These appear to be notes about scavenging operations taking place above ground. These are teams of units dispatched to the surface and notes about how those teams are performing. Interesting that a few of them are missing some data, but I'm not sure what this might mean. In the last, we can view access logs and we don't see anything out of place here. Access local, login Alan Bonet, notes update maintenance requests. Access local, login Alan Bonet, notes begin review process on new work crew candidates. Access local, login Max Loken, access surface work crew tracking, Access local, login Max Loken, update maintenance requests. Access local, login Alan Bonet, installing new operating system software. Business as usual in the robotics department. All our divisions are important, but I tend to think of robotics as the first among equals. In light of the Welcome. recent events, Please we've been asked to take a look at the behavioral mapping in the Gen 3s. I see. Another of Dr. Ao's manipulative power plays. Well, he's wrong. The Gen 3s are functioning just as designed. SRB doesn't agree. Statistically, the Gen 3s have shown an increase in autonomic behavior, suggesting a malfunction in the latest models. I assure you, Doctor, that is not a malfunction. If you ask me, the synth software could use a little more debugging. With our third generation synths, we've improved upon humanity. The synths aren't just father's legacy. They're his gift to humanity. With that, we have completed the task that Father has given us. We've checked in with all of the directors. We explored the entire institute and read absolutely everything we could, with the exception of the FEV lab. But we'll tackle that in an upcoming episode. It's handy at this point to go over a quick summary of some of the important things we learned here that we need to keep in mind while working with the institute. First, synths are somehow escaping the Institute, and the Institute is taking this matter very seriously. Justin Io, the head of the SRB, is leading an investigation, and he's throwing suspicion on other scientists within the Institute, logging into their terminals, and even inspecting their quarters. Second, the Institute is having power problems. They don't have enough power to keep going as is, let alone to power any future projects of theirs. Third, the Institute is planning something that is mysteriously called Phase 3. It's secretive. Many of the other scientists within the Institute are not allowed to know what this Phase 3 is all about. Fourth, we learn that many of the atrocities that the Institute is accused of actually happened. The broken mask incident happened. It was an accident, but the Institute really did send a synth to Diamond City and it massacred people there. The Institute really is kidnapping people, presumably killing them, and then replacing them with synths. To conduct experiments, of course, but they're still murdering people for the sake of them. And the Institute has pretty much given up on humanity in the Commonwealth. They've become callous to the suffering of humans above ground, and indifferent to the fact that they're even responsible for some of that suffering. They see synths as the next evolution of humankind, something that bothers even some of the scientists here. Fifth, while all of the scientists here publicly agree with what Father's doing and appear to support yes. him, there is an undercurrent of concern among the scientists and even some of the department leads about the direction that Father is taking the Institute, especially when it concerns the child synth. Many scientists from many different departments don't understand why he did it, don't understand the purpose of the experiment, and think it's a huge waste of resources. Madison Lee, in particular, thinks that Father is keeping something from her. Most of the scientists resent the fact that Father pretty much allowed Nate to go wherever he wanted in the Institute, despite the fact that Nate had been exposed to the ideology of the railroad and his loyalties are uncertain. Will this become a problem later? And lastly, something happened in the FEV lab. It caused the FEV lab to go offline. It's something that bothered Madison Lee, and it's something that Father is trying to keep secret. Next, we need to head back to Father to see what he has next for us. If you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I publish new episodes in this series each and every week. I have a brand new shop. I moved from my old shop to a new shop, which is much more responsive, the website is faster, 
And I've got new designs that you haven't seen before on my brand new shop. I encourage you to check it out and see if anything piques your interest. My designs come on a wide range of products and in a wide range of sizes and colors. You can find a link to my shop in the description below or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos, and they gain access to ox emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the next episode in the full story of The Institute.